the smoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. What, 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 what up, Fade to Black? Bespoke radio for the masses. How you doing? Today's Wednesday, August 10th. 223 days into the new year, 143 days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in downtown Burbank, California. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and... KGRA The Planet. I'm your oh so humble host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? It's Thursday night. It's Vader night. Tonight, open lines all night long. John Rappaport will be here next week at his regularly scheduled time. So tonight, we may bring you a full night of open lines. The call-in number is 323-825-5045. Wanted to get back and do it old school. We haven't had a full night of open lines in a while, so we're going to do that tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to be on the road to Sacramento. So we're doing Fade to Black tonight, uh, Fader Night tonight getting ready for the Awareness Life Expo. And then Friday night, we're going to be broadcasting live from the Expo. Very excited about that. You can follow me tonight. You're going to need to, by the way. You're going to have to follow me tonight on Twitter at J Church Radio. You have to. Because we're going to make tonight a pretty special evening. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to go old school. We haven't done this in a while. So I've got my pen and paper at the ready. All right, we're going old school. That's what we're going to do tonight. Oh, follow us on Twitter, at J Church Radio, Facebook, YouTube. Everything is fade to black. You know what to do, at J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. So for all of the new listeners tonight, this is Fader Night. This is open lines, 323-825-5045. Anything goes, right? You got a cool story to tell. Uh, Have you seen something in the sky or in your room or some kind of ghost story? Or you have a question, okay, and you just want to yak. Tonight's the night to do it, 323-825-5045. Now, what we're going to do tonight is uh, we went and had uh, a bunch of fade to black hats made for the first time. And the first hat off the production line I uh, posed with today and and wore it out of uh, the facility that was making them for us. And I posted pictures of it. And then I had to go back and, you know, pick them up later uh, today. So that first hat, the rest of the rest of the hats, those are made special for the Awareness Life Expo. Okay. So if you want the first run a fade to black hats. You're going to have to be at the Awareness Life Expo. That's the that's the thing. But if you want the hat, the one that I'm holding right here in my hand, the first hat off the production line that I have here in the bunker. This is 
Fade to black hat. <laughs> I so want to save here of a black hat. Fade to black hat number one. It's right here. And it's uh, going to be autographed, and I will autograph it as hat number one. You want this hat. Tonight, you have to be the best call. doesn't have to be the best question, the best story, the best whatever. The best call. And the reason why I'm stressing Twitter with that is I'm going to weigh heavily on the Fader Not family. You guys know a good call when it happens. You guys know when that magic happens. And it could be a question. It could be a story. It could be a statement. Right? Okay. But the best call of the night, we always know when that happens. So I will take into consideration Twitter. Okay, but I'm I'm the guy. Rita's not going to override my vote. I am giving away my hat tonight. All right? There you go. Best call of the night. We'll get the first uh, fade to black hat. Now, also tonight, if you can go to the Awareness Life Expo, do call in. And uh, we'll give away some passes. We are leaving uh, uh, tomorrow. So that's it. Tonight's the night. If you can, if you want to go and you can make it to the Awareness Life Expo, and we will be broadcasting from there Friday night, uh, call in tonight and, 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 and make it. Don't, don't go, hey, man, I want, I want tickets. Call in and, and ask a question. Tell me a story. Earn it. And we'll give away passes. All right, we also have a, a bunch of stuff uh, here from the junk drawer that I'd like to start letting go of, too, as well. I have got a pile of the best authors in, in, in the world here, okay, in the bunker. I probably have um, 100 books, all of them autographed, okay? They're all signed by the authors to give away on this show, and we haven't done that in a long time. And quite frankly, it's backing up in here, man. I can't walk. So uh, I've got books. So make it good. Okay, make it good. Call in tonight. And again, the best call will get this. I keep picking it up and looking at it. Dang, these hats turned out good. And uh, Serlana, it's got the Serlana alien skull on it. Thank you, Serlana. You know, uh, you know how much we appreciate that. And uh, and the fade to black logo, and they just came out right. Rita um, put it together and and just made it balanced, and it just looks cool. So, and this is the first run. This is it. This is it. This is the first run. Okay, you can email throughout the show tonight, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com. The sandbox is hashtag F two B. Come and hang out with us, and and you're gonna want to tonight because as you listen to the show, whoever. I think we'll do this probably at 9.30 or so, somewhere in there. We'll start to tally, and we'll, we'll, we'll probably know by that time who the best call is. And, and there's always going to be that straggler. There's going to be that last-minute guy that thinks he's got it, that uh, he or she, that she's got what it takes to hang on a Thursday night on uh, Fade to Black. All right, I'd like to welcome our newest sponsor to Fade to Black, CCCP Publishing. And you can go and click on the banner right now over at jimmychurchradio.com. Order Future Esoteric by Brad Olson for just $12.97. You're going to get a second book thrown in the box for free. Just use the promo code JIMMY. Go now, get it. Future Esoteric is an amazing book. Just an amazing book, and Brad is one of the best. And he's going to be at the Awareness Life Expo, by the way, uh, in two days. Okay, and also Life Change Tea. Ronnie has got one of the best companies in the world. Um, it has kept me alive for the last eight months, at least. And uh, just go and click on the banner right now at JimmyChurchRadio.com. It'll take you to GetTheTea.com. Mention Jimmy when you order. That's all you've got to do, either over the phone or online, and you're going to get free shipping on your order. Okay? Colostrum LD, that's what you need to do. Do the Moringa. The um, the olive leaf Oof. keeps me alive. Okay? It's going to get me through this weekend, too, as well. And all of our friends and family and staff here at uh, Fade to Black are all on the Life Change Tea program. 
do it. Okay? Now, check out also Studio Dome. We are going to be giving away uh, a Studio Dome stereo package at the Awareness Life Expo. We're going to do a raffle, and all the proceeds are going to go to uh, some researcher or author out there that uh, needs funding for their project, and we are going to do that. So this is courtesy of Studio Dome, and we will have it up at the Awareness Life Expo, okay? But the package is two SB B2 speakers, true wireless stereo Bluetooth technology, the latest stereo Bluetooth technology, and you can get everything in a hard shell case for just $129. Use the promo code JCRTWS. When you order, gets you 60% off the normal price of $399. And, of course, you are going to get free shipping. Yes, the Awareness Life Expo is kicking off in just two days. It's August 12th, 13th, and 14th uh, with uh, Richard Dolan, Brad Olson, Victor Camacho, Patty Greer, Holly Cook, Lang Caston, Ruben Uriarte, Brett Luter, Chad Meek, and I will be hosting uh, the Faded Black UFO panel on Saturday. We're going to broadcast on Friday. And just go and get the gold package right now, and you'll be able to not only attend the mixer with all of uh, the speakers, but uh, the Faded Black broadcast. You're going to have a full weekend pass. Uh, you're going to have lunch, unlimited workshops. Go and do it now. We're going to start hanging out with everybody uh, tomorrow night, actually. We will be there tomorrow. So there you go. <sighs> all right. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to Antonio Bandadas. He is 56, the lady killer, man. God, that guy. Oof. Yeah. Jethro Tull, frontman Ian Anderson today. I mean, is he a singer or is he a flute player? I mean, what's the deal with that? But anyway, one of the best. Ian Anderson today is 69. And Justin Thoreau is 45 today. And he's one of my favorite cats right now. Great actor, but I don't know if you know this, but he wrote the screenplay for Tropic Thunder. And he was the dude that played the evil DJ in Zoolander. You remember the dreadlocks and the funky teeth? You remember that guy, right? Justin Thoreau today is 45. Our dead guy's birthday today is moment of silence for Jimmy Dean. Yeah. 1928 to 2010, died at the age of 81. Yeah, remember that song, Big Bad John? Well, he was that singer who turned into an actor, a television host, and a businessman. Of course, he created the Jimmy Dean Sausage brand, did all those commercials. Uh, I think somewhere I still have a box uh, back at the house of some Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches, you know, been in the refrigerator for a couple of years. He was an entertainer, entertainer for the uh, United States Air Force. He never completed high school. He gave puppeteer Jim Henson his first national media exposure on the Jimmy Dean show. And he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame back in 2010. Happy birthday, Jimmy Dean. A total class act. On this day in history, it happened. August 10th, 1977. 24-year-old postal employee David Berkowitz is arrested and charged with being the son of Sam, the serial killer who terrorized New York City for more than a year, killing six people and wounding seven others with that forty-four caliber revolver, and blamed it all on his neighbor's dog, whose name was Sam. Fader fact, when Charles Manson was a child, his mother sold him for a pitcher of beer. It all kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? Tonight, it's Fader Night. Open lines all night long. 323-825-5045. We're going to be giving away stuff all night. We're going old school. We haven't done this in a long time. So uh, let's do this. And tonight, the best call is going to get Fade to Black Hat. Number one, the first one, and I'm going to sign it for you. All right, there you go. Let's get this show cracking, man. I am so ready to do this. Um, now, I talk a lot about hacking, anonymous, Tor Network, Onion, uh, you know, the hacker culture. Uh, it's something that I'm not only fascinated with, but, you know, I was just never smart 
enough to code. I tried to code. I tried to learn how to code. I tried to get through uh, HTML. Got decent at it, and and so did Rita. We thought we had it dialed in. Uh, started to write uh, a lot of flash code, and and I was doing some animation work because I'm just just so into it. But I just know that I'm not the brightest light bulb, right? And and it's it's a hard thing to do. But it's a culture, the computer, the coders, Silicon Valley. I love it. I love the internet. But there's a story here that you've got to hear, and it's about IP. <laughs> yeah, man, that address. A two-hour drive from the geographic center of the United States sits this farmhouse, quiet farmhouse, near Potwin, Kansas. And Joyce Vogelman Taylor's grandfather built the house in 1902, and her father spent 85 years living in it. Now, what does that have to do with with IP addresses and the internet and hacking and, and the entire world, right? What is it? Just, just listen to me. Joyce remembered a moment back in 1942 at the end of World War II and uh, at the end of World War II, which wasn't in sight yet, but her father purchased a Delco electric generator for the house that was built in 1902. And he purchased light bulbs and a toaster because he's got a generator now. And it was a massive tech upgrade for the house. Now, I need you to picture what I am painting. More than 70 years later, technology made the 82-year-old's life and those of her renters, and their names were James and Teresa Arnold, a digital age horror story. Of, of an order of magnitude that you have no idea. The little house in the center of the country became the crossroads of the internet with the craziest consequences. Now, stay with me, seriously. I posted uh, about a year ago, I think it was about a year ago, uh, maybe a little longer, uh, the uh, Tor internet traffic. Okay, and um, it was a it was a GIF. It was animated, and oddly enough, and as I looked at this, uh, the centers for all of this were in some obvious places and not so obvious places. But um, you know, it was Amsterdam. It was Northern Europe. Yes, London was was part of it. And over here in the United States, you would think it would be a few specific places, but. One of those locations was Potwin, Kansas. And it didn't make any sense to me. It's like, how does all of this internet traffic go? And you could follow it. You could watch this animation and watch it go from Europe all the way across, straight to uh, Iceland was <laughs> another big uh, spot for it. But Kansas, of all places, right? Yeah, Chicago and Dallas, you expect that in Miami and San Francisco, of course, right? L.A. a little bit. But Kansas, Kansas was like the world hub. Well, the discovery about Potwin, Kansas, was made by uh, a journalist named Casimir Hill of Fusion. And he broke the story in April. Last week, the Arnolds filed lawsuit in the United States District Court for Kansas against MaxWind. Now, write that down. A digital company that maps IP addresses and who the Arnolds claim is responsible for turning their perfect country home into a digital age horror house. And I'm not making this up. The first time Taylor realized something was amiss was when she received a phone call back in 2011 from a small business owner who had angrily blamed her for his customers' email problems. That's in the middle of a farm in Kansas. The conversation shocked her. She didn't understand. She didn't get it because she owned a gateway computer, but she used it as a typewriter. 
she composed her Sunday school lessons and letters on it. That's all she she barely even touched the internet, much less used it to overload a small business's email server. She didn't know what was going on. She didn't even understand the language. The first call, this call, it came from Connecticut. It was a man who was furious because his business internet was overwhelmed with emails. His customers couldn't use their email. He said that it was the fault of the address at the farm. That's when they first became aware that something was going on. They didn't understand. After that initial strange call, um, complaints started pouring in often with distressing and sometimes criminal accusations aimed at the Arnolds. Now, in May 2011, police and sheriff's officers knocked on their door looking for a stolen truck, <laughs> right? Officers then continued showing up, accusing them of harboring runaway children, of keeping girls in the house to make pornographic films, Ambulances started showing up at the house, prepared to save suicidal people. FBI agents, federal marshals, IRS collectors have all appeared at this house in the middle of nowhere. So have angry Internet users who claim that they were ripped off by the Arnolds. At least once, the Arnolds were even doxxed. Yes, hackers posted their names and personal details across the Internet. Which just made things worse. Now, one day, a broken toilet <laughs> showed up in their driveway. Neither the Arnolds nor Taylor had any idea what was going on. Now, the genesis of what actually happened was 2002, when a company called MaxMine was founded, and it maps IP addresses. Now, we all know how notoriously unreliable that practice is, but many can't be directly linked to an address, okay? Only to a state, maybe even a country, all right? And criminals, if they want to hide their IP addresses, you know, like me, you know, it, 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 it's done. I do every day. I reset routers two or three times a day. And I've got software, and I, I, run, I run blind. I have to. Well, for this tech to even work in the slightest, Maxwin matched e, each IP address to a set of coordinates. Now stay with me. This presented a problem when the company didn't have an exact location. Sometimes it could only determine that an IP address was in the U.S., just in the U.S. In those cases, the company mapped that address to a specific set of coordinates, which was 38 degrees north, 97 degrees west, or in digital maps talk speak, 38.0000 and minus 97.0000. That just happens to be the front yard of the Arnold's house. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to say. More than 600 million IP addresses were mapped to that yard, to the Arnold's house. <laughs> oh, man. And no one connected with the farmhouse knew any of this until Fusion's reporter, Casimir Hill, who had been investigating the practice of mapping IP addresses, searched through Max Wynn's database, and he discovered that 600 million IP addresses went to the same house in Kansas. <laughs> and he thought he should maybe tip off Taylor, who's the owner of the house, and maybe give her a phone call. I'm not making this up. To fully understand what happened, it's important to understand how Internet protocol addresses work. Most devices 
that we use are connected to a network via internet protocol. We know that. To do so, it requires an IP address. We also know that. Thus, every smartphone, computer, laptop, tablet, anything else that connects to the internet has one. The IP address primary purpose is to allow these devices to interact with one another. But the IP address of your personal computer is generally not seen by other devices. Instead, that IP address is used to connect to a router, which then uses its specific IP address to connect to the Internet. Understand? But sometimes that can mean your IP address is linked to just you. E.g., if you live alone and use a personal password-protected wireless router, it can also mean that your IP address is shared by many. That's if you have a bunch of stuff connected to your router. Get it? Since networks can span buildings, blocks, or even cities in the case of public Wi-Fi, it's not always simple to pin down an exact geographical address of an IP address. The term address in IP address is a bit of a misnomer, and it always has been. As in fact, it, just listen to this. There are Many that are readily available, free programs that can mask IP addresses. I use one, and mapping them becomes even murkier. Uh, murkier. Sometimes Maxwind, the company, could only get information linking an IP address to a country. Get it? The reason why it shows Arnold's address and their front yard, it's because it was a default location that they assigned everything to when it was inside of the United States and they couldn't determine a city, a zip code, right? A state. So they just had their default address, which was in the geographic center of the United States. But nobody at Maxwin bothered to check if it was somebody's house, right? They, they did the X marks of the spot. They came up with 39 degrees, 50 minutes north. 98 degrees, 35 uh, minutes west. When you translate that, round off the numbers, it's that famous 3897, minus, minus 97. And when you go and search that, what happens, right? It Their house shows up. And one blogger created a heat map, and that's what I was talking about earlier. I did it, of internet usage. And they came up with this spot in Potwin, Kansas, as res responsible for the most internet web usage in the world, more than New York or even Silicon Valley. And it was the Taylor's house. The default location was Kansas. And nobody bothered to see if it was somebody's house. And they said, hey, man, we didn't know somebody would actually search for a physical location. You know, my bad. You know what? That's not an excuse. But it's definitely stupid on any level. Though it's not always possible to to locate an IP address. Well, you know what? Now we have uh, the craziness of Google Maps, Google Earth, Google Satellite. And it may not be an exact science, but they published that. They did it. And now 600 million IP addresses are tied to their house. Now, they have since fixed it. You know how they fixed it? They found a nearby lake. And they made it the middle of the lake. And they said, you know what? Our bad. You know, we're sorry. Now, they're being sued for $75,000. Seriously. The max mind is getting off cheap. And if I was them, I would uh, add a couple of zeros to that number. I would. I'd cut the check, apologize, and call it a day. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight is Fader Night. And I've got Fade to Black Hat number one right here in the bunker. Taking your calls all night long. Best call gets this hat. Giving away books. Giving away passes to the Awareness Life Expo. Let's have some fun. Let's go old school and open up the phone lines. 323-825-5045. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. I'll be right back.
You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I got to tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. It doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three-letter. So, seriously. Give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444. Or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S.com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. Hi, folks. Ronnie here reminding you that June is Health Awareness Month, sponsored by Get the Tea. Com. Many of you have heard our tea commercial, maybe visited the website, but haven't committed because, well, you just don't know. Skeptical. We understand. Just to remind you, our tea is not just tea. In fact, very little tea. Life Change Tea is a unique blend of eight different herbs, removing intruders that attack your health. You brew our tea to make the concentrate, you add water, and put in the fridge. Two eight-ounce glasses a day, and life will be good. Visit us at GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And this month is lots of fun stuff with Health Awareness Month. You could be picked and receive your order absolutely free. You never know. Read the testimonies and try our products. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. And for great health tips, visit my YouTube channel at Health Matters Now, where you can learn about health tips and how products work on your body. Join me, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Klutzke with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthews, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back to Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter, at JChurchRadio. Tonight, you kind of have to. Taking calls all night long, 323-825-5045. Best call of the night gets Fade to Black hat number one, and I will sign it for you. And don't have me sign your name. You, You don't want that. You just want me to sign my name and put number one on it, because someday... Right? <laughs> you can take it into uh, Pawn Stars. <laughs> All right. 323-825-5045. I've got a pile of books I'd like to give away tonight. Uh, Awareness Life Expo Passes. And by the way, if you're a vendor out there and uh, you want to be completely hooked up uh, at the Awareness Life Expo, there are exactly two vendor tables left and available and uh, just contact uh, uh, Javier through uh, the Awareness Life Expo website. Javier is a vendor, and he really takes care of his vendor crew. All right, so go and experience that. Let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hi, Jimmy. This is Bev Noel. Hey, Bev. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad. How about yourself? Well, uh, I'm doing good, but you're going to take a crack at this hat, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bring your A game, Bev. What you got? Okay, well, I got a question also. And it's, 
going into what I want to talk about. Do you ever miss the old times without all this technology? Um, uh, yeah, well, of course I do. <laughs> I know, so do I. And kids, you know, kids nowadays, they don't have the imagination we used to. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, it 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 strikes on so many different fronts, you know. Uh, it, it, to me, uh, you know, and I don't want to go all completely nostalgic on this, Bev, but um, mm -hmm. I'll say this: there was something about, you know, your shorts, a t-shirt, uh, you know, a pair of tennis shoes, and a bright summer day in front of you, right? And, right. and if you were lucky, you even had a bike. And you, oh, yeah, we did. Right. And you <laughs> took off, and, and there was no TV, no cell phones, no internet, nothing mm -hmm. to interfere with your imagination of the day. And, exactly. And I, you know, but it, it actually moved on for me a little bit more than that, because when, when, I, when I finally moved to Panama, which was in 77, and I got away from, because down in Panama, we didn't have television. We had Armed Forces, the AFN, the Armed Forces Network, that nobody watched, right? So we had one channel that was on um, from the late afternoon, and it signed off at like 10 o'clock at night. And that was it. And none, so th th there wasn't that. We didn't have television. And we didn't talk about television. Back then, it was things like Mork and Mindy or whatever was going oh, on. Yes, I remember but, that but, show. but we didn't, and we didn't care. Uh, we didn't exactly. have uh, the newspaper that f uh, was flown in every day from Miami was the Miami Herald. And that was our connection to the outside world. And barely wow. even read that. We were into our own worlds. And, and when I got back to the States, and I, I came back one year for summer vacation and i came back and everybody was talking about this tv show and this tv show and this you know and taxi and the, and i i couldn't get involved in the conversations number yeah, one the is. conversation sounded dumb to me number one number two i didn't even know what they were talking about i was into uh uh just other things and i found out how uh unimportant certain things were here in society in the states it was a really shocking thing and at the end of the summer you would have thought i i, I thought that i missed the united states when i was in panama and i couldn't wait to get back and 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 jump into that world and and i found at the end of the summer i couldn't wait to get back to panama i just couldn't wait to get back to to the world down there and I, I still today, I miss it. I miss it every single day. And, and I think a, a part of the charm in my memory is uh, was the disconnect that happened, uh, the lack of technology down there. We had beaches, we had friends, and uh, and that's what we did, you know, and it's kind of weird. So, yeah, do I miss it? Yeah, and I have reasons why. Well, and, and you know, my our, our biggest thing is our mom and dad had to, I mean, come out and drag us in when we were kids. We didn't want to go in. And now all these kids nowadays, all they want to do is just sit on their iPads, iPhones, computers, you know. And, and, and you know, they, they talk about childhood obesity. Well, that's the biggest thing right there. Yeah, they don't yeah. Get out and, and exercise. Yeah, I hear you. And it's my problem, too. So, Bev, you're in the running, okay? You're okay. in the running. And, and, and that was a great call, a good way to kick off a fader night. Thank you so much, Bev. Well, thank you, Jimmy. I love you. you. Give my best to your better half, and I'll talk to you. Okay, I sure will. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. You're live. Oh, you got me. Jimmy. Yes. Have you ever seen the startup page for uh, Windows 7? Uh, the startup page for Windows 7? I have it running to my right on one computer still. Why? What's up? Well, you know how it comes in? There's like these little specs that come in from the side and they come to the center and then they whirl around a center point and uh, it kind of explodes and then... That's it. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I haven't. I, I haven't paid attention in so long. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I guess so. I heard. I heard the new operating system was going back to that for some reason. I was just curious. But uh, when uh, back in the 
2002, I was driving up through the middle of Nevada. I'd just gone through Lund, Nevada, and just past the little alien highway cutoff, and I was going up to Lund Junction at 395. Uh, I was driving a semi full of hazardous waste going to Utah. And um, I got out there away, it's about a half hour, and it's kind of dark. I'll be damned if I didn't see that startup page happening in front of my eyes. Oh, really? Out, off, off to the, into the, uh, the open spaces of Nevada. It just happened like little specks came out of the side. I started noticing them. And they were all colored, different colors. And they came in really fast to a central point. And they started to rotate. And all of a sudden, this big white light went boom, lit up. And they went inside. <laughs> the light went out, <laughs> and it disappeared. Wow. Now, uh, what's you have, your name? You have to realize that I was only about 50 miles away from Area 51. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to get to that in a second. But first, what's your name? Boogie. Boogie. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy that for now, Boogie. Okay. All right. Good Good. Good enough. Um, it's so weird. But I, I was, uh, you know, I was trying to do some service on my Microsoft service, and I was listening half, halfway listening to their, their rap they had going on, and it sounded like they were going to put the, revive the Windows 7 startup page on their new system. And I was just curious why they would do that. Well, but, but I, I, but, I absolutely saw that. Yes, Boogie, Boogie, happen Boogie. In front of me as I was driving down the road. It was so wild. Well, so. I didn't lose I didn't lose any time. I didn't think anything of it. I right. got up to uh, Ely, sacked out for a while. So I went into Utah and delivered that nasty stuff that Utah seems to like to buy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, but Boogie, let me jump in here. Uh, so, so you went. So now, uh, I don't know when this happened, but when you saw the Windows 7 startup page for the first time, were you, were you just like, holy crap? That's what I I'd saw on YouTube. I've never been on a computer in my life. Right. Wow. And that's... there it was, right in front of me. I, when I, I flipped over my kid's Windows 7 for the first time, I'm really computer illiterate. I just finally got a computer of my own a few years ago, a Surface. And, uh, right. That was the wildest thing. And when I flipped it open, I said, oh, my God, I saw that happen to me out in the, the kind of high desert of Nevada along this riverbed that I was uh, tra traveling along up through the center of uh, Nevada. It paralleled 15, but I didn't like taking 15. I liked taking – it ended up going up 395 through um, Ely and then into Wendover and then up into uh, where I got rid of the stuff up by the radiation dump and the hazardous waste dump and the incinerator and all that stuff that's in the – Western Utah. It's such a remote part of the country. There's a reason why A, Area 51 is there, and B, why we did all of the <laughs> nuclear testing. It's remote. Uh, there's nothing uh, yeah. out there. And uh, and for you to see something like this, it doesn't surprise me. But what I find interesting. identical as the startup page of Windows right. 7. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I've, been, I've been to the test site. I've been all over the place. I was to the, at the portal up Yucca Mountain. I, I felt like uh, timeless. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I've, I've, I've driven into bomb holes on the on the test site. <laughs> oh, that's nuts! You know, can't, can't get any worse than in the bottom of a bomb hole. So right, I dumped it there. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, well, that's thanks, uh, thanks, Jimmy. You got the greatest show. Uh, no, thank you, Boogie. And that's this is a great phone call, and I can't wait. Uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask everybody in Twitter. Somebody out there needs to post an animation for me of uh, the Windows 7 startup page because I can't do it right now because if I do, the broadcast will shut off. I can't yeah. restart that yeah. computer. I'm pretty sure it had to be Windows 7, I'm pretty sure. All right. Uh, yeah, it's just when you when you fire it up for the first time, you know, there's uh, the uh, Microsoft statement and it comes in and turns on and there it is. It's so wild. <laughs> okay, I'm going to check it out, Boogie. Okay, thanks. Uh, that, yeah. you're, you're in the running for the hat. Great phone call. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. You got bye. it. Uh, that's a great phone call right there. And uh, Windows 7 startup looked like something that he saw while he was driving a truck to drop off nuclear waste. Yeah. Love it. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. And I'm not joking. The best call tonight gets the first fade to black hat. 
the first one. Num- numero uno. All right. Okay. Now, um, uh, where was I? Oh, in an attempt. Now, I t- going back to my uh, uh, rant, the the fact that this went down like it did is an amazing situation. And nobody thought about, and especially going back to 2002, that there would be something like Google Maps and being able to go and immediately go and look. And somebody, I, I mean, now we're talking about 600 million IP addresses, right? So when you think about that and the amount of traffic that is going through and you go and you find this IP address and then you're able to get the location and you go and look and it's a remote farmhouse in the middle of Kansas and you're just thinking, man, somebody is sitting inside of that house that is just up to no good, right? And <laughs> And... It gets tied into everything, child pornography and and uh, and suicides and the IRS chasing people down and, and federal investigations. And, I mean, stolen vehicles all day and all night long. Unbelievable situation, which is going to take me to uh, my next story here in just a second. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Who's calling? This is Captain speaking. Oh, hey, Captain. How are you? I'm doing okay. Listen, I need to uh, put this in your uh, listeners' mind, and maybe your mind, too, as well. You know, uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Jesse Marcel Sr. Of course. Back back in 1946, uh, or 47, if you want to say, but I think it's 46, but... Uh, I want to do some research on this. You know, when Jesse Marcel Sr. Uh, uh, brought those pieces of the UFO parts home and he showed it to his son, uh, Jesse Marcel Jr. Yep. Uh, my question is this. The inscription that was, uh, that bark inscription that was uh, in the hands of Jesse Marcel Sr. My question is this. I understand that that whole apparatus had wind up in a special place called Warehouse 13. 13 or 18? You mean 18? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Warehouse 18. Uh-huh. I want, I want to do some research on that because what this, on the inscription... It was a message. I want somebody to to look at that uh, inscription and tell me exactly what it means. Because I have a hunch that uh, what that message has said, it says, we are here to help. That was the message. Why do you think it was a message? Because uh, several people, uh, I went back and did some research on this, and several uh, professors and doctors and and uh, 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 analysis, and they analyzed, and they could not they could not decipher what the message was as far as language you know, language wise, but. They did what, uh, what the, 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 I can't think of the name of that, the professor for France, the one who was in the movie called, um, uh, 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 Close Encounter of the Third Kind. What is his name? The, uh, the French, the French. Oh, Valet, Jacques Valet. Jacques Valet, yes. Jacques Valet, uh, I wrote an article, and it, it was so amazing. He stated, he says that they're communicating with us. And he, he stated, he talked about those bars, those descriptions on, on that bar that was uh, during the crash. And he broke it down. He stated, uh, uh, he said, uh, plainly, he said that, he stated that we are not alone. We are here to help. And I'm saying to myself, isn't it the same language 
that they were using to the time when that UFO landed on that mountain in Arizona. So I'm saying to myself, this is very interesting because they're using the same language that uh, Close Encounter had used. Uh, uh, Mr. Steven Spielberg has stated that he talked to uh, Jacques and uh, he stated they were breaking down the language and they broke down that language. That's in Warehouse, 13, uh, warehouse 18. And what I want to say to you is this. Do you think that we'll ever know uh, uh, during the time when disclosure does happen that we'll know exactly what that language is and and who created the language? Well, okay, a couple of things on that, that piece of debris. Um, it has been described... Uh, uh, a few times uh, about having strange symbols on the inside of the this uh, what has been described as an I beam. Now the the interesting part about that is Jesse Marcel Jr. Uh, I think he was twelve years old. I think yeah, right? twelve years old. Exactly. He was twelve years old, but he didn't write it down. It was only done by memory. Um, and, uh, you know, so other people have described, and it, it's very few, these hieroglyphics, but nobody actually wrote them down. So everything is kind of, you know, conjecture, and it's done by memory. Uh, the, you know, the only way to find out exactly what that, you know, what the uh, symbols were um, is to get the original piece, which is uh, obviously, according to the military, it's at uh, it's at Wright Patterson. Whether it's in Hangar 18, you know, you know, nobody knows, but it's somewhere certainly 100 percent. If we are to believe the military, it's it's at Wright Patterson. Will we ever be able to see that I beam? I don't know. I would love for you know that uh, those crates of debris to be broken open and we can go and, and analyze it someday. But we actually don't know what that was. Now, would it be a message on the inside of a piece of an I-beam? I don't know, uh, Captain. And the reason why I say that is you're suggesting that the craft was built, uh, the framework of the craft had this message all over it. They only got one small piece of it, right, that, that Jesse Marcel Sr. brought home and put on the table and showed Jesse Marcel Jr. Um, so would a message like that be written all over the craft? So one day, if you know they somebody dismantled it, that they would find this message? I don't know. It's an interesting thing to look at. I would certainly like to see this debris. Um, and we all would. I wish there was just a photograph or something that that uh, uh, would show it. I mean, that would be the smoking gun of all smoking guns for sure. Um, I would like to know. Um, well, Benny, I tell you, I'm uh, I'm very curious myself because I'm an avid I'm an avid listener of of Linda Moton Howe. Linda Moton Howe did a did the end of a report on that, and uh, please go back and listen to that because uh, it was fantastic, and that's why I bring it up tonight because we need to know what this is all about, and um, I can't wait for that to be revealed. Yeah, wouldn't it be interesting? I've I've always thought in the back of my mind, maybe because they always use the word hieroglyphics, but. Wouldn't it be interesting if uh, they were Egyptian? You know, uh, the I always one of the things I abhor is going back and comparing Hollywood and, and different things to uh, to serious research. But uh, the movie Stargate and the way that it was presented, you know, and having uh, uh, an Egyptian. Uh, area uh planet if you will that w that was completely separate from us here but use the same language right and would that be the case uh with the roswell debris i don't know but man i would love to be able to see that and and have one of the uh 
Egyptologists out there be able to tie things together. So, all right. Hey, Captain, I've got you down. You're in the running for the fade to black hat. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. I just want to give everybody a thought of that because that's something that uh, should be revealed to the entire public, uh, including the entire world, because we need to know the truth. And uh, I know it's going to come. Thank you very much, sir. Th- thank you, Captain, and have a great, safe night. We'll see you on Friday. All right, very good. Thank you, sir. You got it. Mark Tarana, all the way from Oz, is checking in. How are you tonight, Mark? Uh, glad, Jimmy. I'm good, mate. Every <laughs> every time I hear your voice, man, it just uh, I go to another place and another time. How are you? I don't know if that's good or bad, Jimmy. Yeah, I know, right? We'll just leave it there. <laughs> we'll leave that right on the table. No, I'm good, mate. Um, I got a story for you. What do you got? Um, do you remember? You might not remember this, but a couple of months ago, probably maybe six months ago, you were talking about a um a ghost picture at a church in new south wales in australia oh yes 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 uh, yes saint saint ba- saint bartholomew's up at prospect in new south wales yep Do, uh, have you been there uh many times oh seriously many okay. times okay yeah. now uh, i'll let my, you, now i'll let my, you continue <laughs> okay no fair enough <laughs> yeah my my family house was about probably a four minute drive from that church where i grew up but um, we used to um, we used to go down there on Friday the thirteenth because we heard stories about people dressed in white robes and stuff doing weird stuff around the graves. Oh, right on. Anyway, I was telling one of my mates this one night um, that we I was telling him that we used to go down there with a with a hundred and fifty watt spotlight, hundred fifty watt powered spotlight, and we'd we'd see if they were in the graveyard. And if they were there, we'd spot we'd put the spotlight on them. Anyway, um, he was, he goes, oh, really? Okay, no, fair enough. Anyway, he goes, oh, I've got a story about that graveyard. And he goes, my, um, my brother used to be a cameraman for the ABC. Anyway, he was driving home one night. He, he lived, lived in the same suburb as us. Anyway, he was driving home one night past that graveyard, and he noticed that there was a fog sort of in between the, in between the gravestones. And he thought, oh, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a great thing to get my camera in there and just take a, take a shot of that, you know, just to see what it would turn out like. Anyway, so he's in the graveyard, fog around all the gravestones. Anyway, after about probably ten minutes of filming, he goes, he realised, what the hell am I doing in this graveyard at two o'clock in the morning? Anyway, so he packs up his camera and goes home. Anyway, he sort of didn't really think about it for a day or two. Um, and then one one afternoon when he came home from work, he decided to review the tape and see how it turned out. Anyway, um, when he was playing the tape back, he noticed that there was a look like, look like a silhouette of a girl floating over the graves. Oh, really? Yeah, so he sort of spun out a bit and showed his family and, they all freaked out. Anyway, um, he sort of, oh, yeah, no worries. That, that was sort of the excitement was over. Okay. Hey, so, Mark, Mark, I got to hit a break right here. Um, I'm okay. going to put you on hold because you have to finish this story for us. Okay. So just just stay right there. Let's do, let's do the network break right now. And then yep, I've gotta no hear, I, I got the feeling this is going to have a brilliant ending. This is Fade to Black. Taking your phone calls all night long. It's Thursday night. It's Fader night. Best call tonight is going to get Fade to Black Hat, number one. And I'll, I'll even sign it for you right on, right on the bill. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. We're going to hear the rest of Mark's story live from Australia right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Hello, I'm Hakimi and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. 
Hi, this is Ray Hobbs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction. Chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative, author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best-selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now, you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code JIMMY when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Teppy. IRA and 401k account holders, are you crossing your fingers for the stock market to continue its bull run or hoping for a miracle to pay off our $19 trillion national debt? American Bullion wants you to think for a moment. If we go through another significant stock market correction and things begin to unravel, you could suffer some serious losses. On the other hand, gold is a proven long-term asset that could hedge and protect your retirement accounts from getting washed away. Call American Bullion now and let them show you how easy it is to transfer your existing IRA or roll over your 401k into a gold IRA. American Bullion has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and is a leader in gold IRAs. With just one call, their experts can explain everything there is to know and get you started with a free gold IRA guide. Call 1-800-545-2525. Don't procrastinate. Save your retirement. Call American Bullion now at 1-800-545-2525. That's 1-800-545-2525. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the <laughs> yes. We are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full-range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just $129, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. Across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, the planet. All right, welcome back to Fade to Black. It's Fader Night. It's Wednesday, not Thursday. I've been watching Twitter. Yeah, I did. I said Thursday. That's, you know, that's how special tonight is. Taking your phone calls all night long. The best call tonight is going to get Fade to Hat Black number one, which is here with me in the bunker. I also want to announce on Monday, we're going to have filmmaker Damon T. Barry on the show. And go uh, and do yourself a favor before the show on Monday. Go to Damon's YouTube channel, Damon T. Barry. Go and check it out and look at the productions that he has done. And I'm not going to say any more than that. It is an extraordinary thing that he has put together. And uh, and he's a very, very bright man. He's going to be with us on Monday. And then on Wednesday, David Omen and Chris Medina 
are going to be here. And we're uh, David Omen has the house next to Roman Polanski where the uh, the Manson murders took place. Chris Medina just did a reading at his house. I've seen a lot of stuff on this house over the years. Would I go up there and hang out for a reading? Absolutely not. But Chris Medina did. And a lot of stuff has been going down at that house over the years. And that's what we're going to do on Wednesday. Tuesday is a very special announcement, something that you have been requesting for a while. And we're going to make that announcement over the next couple of days. Okay, so that's next week on Fade to Black. Let's get back to uh, Mark Tarana and uh, his story about the graveyard, man. Okay, so... He gets his cameras. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. He packs up. He goes home. A couple of days later, he goes back and looks at the footage, sees a a little girl um, floating over one of the graves, right? Uh, Yeah, it was over a few graves. It's probably about 150 graves in the graveyard. How clear was the footage? Have you seen it, by the way? I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I, this is this is sort of like secondhand information. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, so obviously you've explained that part of the story. So um, he did. They didn't really think much of it. Uh, yeah, they they freaked out. Obviously. Anyway, um, he um, he actually stored his camera equipment underneath my mate's bed. Anyway, so he stored all the camera equipment underneath his bed and put the put the video tape underneath the bed as well. Anyway, my mate said the next morning he woke up and his bedroom was completely destroyed. Like all the all the drawers were out of the out of the cabinets, all his clothes were thrown all over the room, his mattress was half hanging off his bed. A um, couple of the cupboards had been pushed over. And really? he sort of thought, Oh yeah, well it must be my brother's playing a joke on me, you know. So he went out went out to the breakfast table and said, All right, you guys, you know, you played a joke on me, fair enough. Anyway, they go. They go. His brothers go. What are you talking about? And he goes, "Oh, my bedroom. You know, you came in. Well, this is, because this guy, he could sleep through a train going through his bedroom. Okay, I'm listening. So, uh, so um, he goes. You know, you must have messed my bedroom up, mucking around. So they used to always play practical jokes on each other. Anyway, they go. No, we didn't do anything. So they all went into the bedroom, and yeah, fair enough. They all saw that the bedroom was all everything was thrown out everywhere. Anyway, they sort of didn't really, you know, sort of d- couldn't work out what the what the problem was. And then one of them goes, oh, "I wonder if it's anything to do with that tape underneath your bed." Anyway, they ended up taking the tape to a psychic, um, and they this the psychic. I think it was a lady, and she said, "Oh, yeah, well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll need the tape overnight just to um, see if I can get anything off it." Anyway. Um, they sort of went, went away from the psychic, and then the next next morning, as one of them was going to work, they opened at the front door of the house, and this the tape was actually on the front doorstep with a note, and the note said, oh, "This tape, this this thing was too powerful. I couldn't keep it in the house. I had to get rid of it." So that she came back and just dropped it on their front doorstep. So um, they sort of freaked out about that as well. Anyway, to to add another twist to the story. So um, the guy who's a cameraman was actually talking to one of their family friends about the incident and about the bedroom scenario. Anyway, he goes, oh, okay. He goes, what day was it? And um, my mate's brother goes, oh, yeah, it was on X once, you know, whatever day it was. And he goes, oh, okay. He goes, I had a, I had an incident in the same area. Um he goes, I was, there's actually a, a, a main highway that drives, that goes past that church. And he was actually driving along with his wife in the car, same time at night. And um, his wife was asleep. And all of a sudden, he slams the brakes on. And his wife wakes up and goes, what, what, what happened? What happened? And he goes, oh, I just ran over a little girl. What? No. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, so he wow. said, so wow. he's he's, wow. he's relating this story to my mate's brother, and he they're freaking out, and he goes, "What do you mean you went over a little girl?" And he goes, "Oh, I jumped out of the car and went back, and there was no body." Wow. So uh, now, uh, uh, okay, obviously you're in the running here uh, for this hat. 
Um, but okay. where is that tape today? I don't know. Oh man, I'd like I'd like to be able to put my hands on it. And um, are you are you this 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 sort this sort of happened back in the late the late seventies early eighties? Right. Are you still in so, contact with your friend, the one that had the gear under his bed? Um, I haven't talked to him for a couple of years now. I okay. think he's moved into a different state. Oh man, I would love to. Yeah, I would I, love to talk I just to don't him. Know. Don't know where the tape is. No. Oh man, Mark, great story. Do you believe it? Um, you don't have to. Yeah, it's a great yeah, story. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> it's a great story. Mark sure. wants a hat. Good, good call, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, mate. All right. All right my, thanks for taking my call, Jimmy. You got it, Mark. And a great story, by the way. One that I think I'm going to tell again one day. It's well done. Fair enough. Thank thanks, you. mate. Thank you so much, Have Mark. Good evening. We'll see you on Friday. For sure. Thanks. Oh, man, I just cut him off. 323 825 5045. Sorry about that, Mark. And uh, great story, though. Great story. Hi, you're. By the way, one uh, day, uh, turn me down in the background. Turn me down. Sorry, Jimmy. Okay. Uh, this is Casey. Oh, hey, Casey. How are you, man? You're fine, Jimmy. And you? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's yeah. you know, it's it's fader night. It's it's. I almost said Thursday. It's Wednesday night, and uh, we're going old school. We're just going to open up the phone lines all night long, man. How are you? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, Jimmy. Uh, I called you to give you a uh, 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 fair fact. Oh, oh really? That? Okay. Okay. Uh, you know about uh, Taj Mahal, is it? Taj Mahal? Uh-huh. Uh, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, do you know the story about it? Well, I mean, I only know, I don't know the real story like you do. I mean, it was built by uh, uh, one of the kings there for yeah. one of his uh, entourage. It's, 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 this is why I called you, because everybody knows only this story. The story says that uh, the king, Sajadan, uh he built this uh, Taj Mahal for Mumtaj, who is his wife, uh, in memory of her, he built that one. But actually, if you go, if you need more information, if you go to YouTube, and if you put truth about uh, Taj Mahal, you will find a lot of evidence that this is not at all built by Sajahan. And uh, this used to be an old uh, Hindu Shiva temple. And uh, this, uh, uh, those days, uh, Mughal emperors, the Muslim emperors, what they do is when they conquer uh, some place, the first thing what they do is they loot everything, whatever the wealth uh, that place has. And then the second thing what they do is, if there is any religious temple or anything like that, they will destroy, try to destroy that, and they'll build a mask on top of it like a big doom on the top of it. Okay. Uh, but they couldn't do that one to Taj Mahal. So what they did is, inside the Taj Mahal, whatever uh, the scriptures they had, they tried to replace it, or they'll pull it out. And even now, there is a conspiracy theory uh, that there is a big basement uh, in uh, Taj Mahal, and that is permanently locked. And uh, Indian government is very much afraid to open the truth because, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, Hindu-Muslim problems in India and it will, uh, it will make a very big issue out of it. So that's why they didn't do it. But inside the Taj Mahal, if you see it, uh, the first uh, rule for uh, Muslim uh, is that there should not be any ideal worship. So if you look at Taj Mahal and say that, you will see a lot of... Uh, there is a Hindu god, do you know, elephant god? Yes. Yeah, who, one of his pictures will be there in one corner. And then uh, there, if you uh, know a little bit about this Vedic uh, scriptures, there are a lot of Vedic symbols in it. And uh, in any mosque, if you go in, they won't be even, they won't have any picture of a flower or something like that. Nothing will be there. If you look at when inside Taj Mahal, there are a lot of artworks 
which has naturally nature uh, depicted, depicted uh, thing like that. So just want to let you know that your uh, uh, radio show has a lot of followers. I'm not saying this one to offend any Muslims or anybody who will listen no, to no, it. No, no, of course not. Of you course know? not. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, 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 like hey, how we say that history got to be rewritten, like Egypt and other things, you know, like that. This Taj Mahal history should be uh, rewritten. Have you ever seen, Casey, have you ever seen the movie Ghost World? Uh, no. Jimmy. Okay, you need to write that down. Ghost World. And okay. Because the opening dance, the opening scene of the movie has uh-huh. um, uh, 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 a Bollywood uh, movie that is being played, and it's a dance scene, right? And it's amazing. Um, and is, is this about seven? Uh, it, the the song is called Jean Pecan Ho. Do you know? Do you know? Oh. Uh, um, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, Jimmy. I I'll go right away and uh, check this. Oh, out. Is, man. Is, is this is this is something about the uh, hydrogen collider? Uh, no, 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 no. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. It's a comedy movie with. Uh, 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 Johansson, whatever her name is, it's like her first movie. Um, oh, okay. but you've got to go and watch that opening dance sequence, and the band in the background is amazing. And uh, somebody in Twitter needs to post it, uh, post a video of it right now. It's all over YouTube. You just look yeah. up Ghost. Hey, uh, what did you say? Uh, that one again, uh, uh, Jimmy? Ghost? Ghost? Ghost World. Ghost World, okay. Ghost Let me World. Check that one. Yeah, you've got okay. to just uh, just do a Google search. Ghost World uh, Indian dance song. That's all you got to do, and it'll play. All right. Oh yeah, wonderful. Okay, and get right. back to me after you watch it. Yeah, sure, Jimmy. Uh, do I have uh, one more minute? Uh, okay, I've got calls backed up. One more minute, only because it's you, yeah. Casey. Okay. Uh, this is another set of fact which I want to give you. Uh, you know about Hinduism, is it? I, I Hindu- sure. Hinduism, yeah. Everybody thinks that Hinduism is a religion. Uh, do you know Hinduism is a way of living? Yes. You can be a you can be a Christian and a, a, can be a Hindu. You can be a Muslim and a Hindu. You can be an atheist and can be a Hindu. Yes. Uh, when I was a kid. Uh, somebody came up to me and he goes, Hey man, you know, uh, uh, Hinduism's the way to go, man. Screw all this other crap. And, and I went, I was young, you know, I was, you know, uh-huh. 11, 12 years old. And I, so I went and read up on it. I was like, man, you know, Hinduism's kind of cool. You know, uh-huh. it's, it, it's kind of cool. It's a way of life. So there you go. Hey, Casey, thank you so much for the phone call, my brother. And go watch. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Go good watch. Job, good show. Go watch Ghost World, okay? I'm doing it right away. Thank I'll t- you. I'll talk to you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Man, I've got Ghost World right here. Hold on for a second. Maybe, just maybe this will play. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Let me see how this... So cool. Man, I could watch this all day long. And she's got her, uh, the the whole band. The band is called what? The Huggy Bears? The Teddy Bears? All right. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go back to the phones. I could. You'll never, ever, 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 ever forget the tip that I just gave you. Hi, you're live on Fade to Block. Good evening, Jimmy. Hey, How Dino. I've been having all kinds of communication problems lately associated with Fade to Black program. 
um, my phone went all of a sudden it worked all day. It was two nights ago. I was going to call in no dial tone, no nothing. I tried to call the, uh, supplier. They were going to deal with it and shut down everything. And I said, no, I got to listen to Jimmy. And then I woke up the next morning. It's like nothing was wrong. Um, and the second thing was I have a pair of walkie talkies I've had for about 15 years and they all of a sudden, you know, destructed. I guess they got old. You can't replace the batteries. So I went out and bought a new pair, right? And um, I just happened to turn one of them on yesterday or the day before on scan, you know, to scan through. It's a GMPRS radio. It's, you know, got 22 channels. And it's kind of, I guess, in between. Uh, it's not uh, ham radio, and it's not, you know, just every day. It's, it's a different wavelength that the public can use. But I'm sure it's monitored by the FCC. So to my surprise, Channel 9, which apparently Channel 9 uh, internationally, at least in the United States, is supposed to be the hailing channel. If you want to find someone, you call on Channel 9. Then you can switch to another channel. And I was just scanning, and it stopped on Channel 9. And it was really clear. And there were these two guys talking, just like we're talking on the phone because it's a little less formal than if you have a ham radio. You don't need to use call letters. And so I just happened to listen. I was eavesdropping. I figured they'd drop off, but they were talking for about a minute. And the one guy wanted the other guy to come up. He said, you still got your tools. I want you to install video on my house. And, uh, you know, and I thought, oh, well, whatever. It's kind of weird that why don't they call each other? And then he said, yeah, the UFOs have been flying over here. I've got to get them on tape. I've seen them several nights. Can you believe that? Oh, that's that crazy. of all people, when I buy a new walkie, that I'm hearing these guys talk about UFOs on a public airwave. Now, Dino, if you get a set of walkie-talkies, then you have to give the other walkie-talkie to somebody else. Who gets the other walkie-talkie? Well, so far... You know, I've only been using it. I used it once with some friends when we drove up to uh, Tahoe so we could keep in touch in the car without a cell. That was before cell phones. <laughs> and uh, I use it around the place here when the plumber or I have someone working in the basement, an electrician, and I can talk to them without yelling. But I'm ready. I'm ready if there's an electro pulse. And uh, at least I'll be able to talk with one person when nobody else can communicate with the net or anything. Ah, the, if an EMP hits, the last thing that's going to work is those walkie-talkies. Well, if you keep them in a, a static bag, I think it can stop uh, electronic damage to the transistors, you know, or put them in a container that is shielded. Dino, you freak me out. I, I'm sure up at the pad you've got some lead-lined room. <laughs> no, not a room, not a room. <laughs> so these guys are actually talking about UFOs, though. And if you were, no, listen- it amazed me. I mean, I, I thought it was a joke, and I and it's I as I said. Well, what's uh, the range on the walkie-talkies? That well, uh, the new the new ones are a little bit better than the old ones, and I'm up on a hill, and they're supposed to go uh, level ground up to 20 miles, but. Uh, it's pretty hilly here, and they say in hilly thing terrain, it can be cut down quite a bit. So I would estimate, <clears throat> you know, they're within five or ten miles, and it was really clear there wasn't static. Uh, it came across as clear as you come across on the internet with the program here. I, I was kind of shocked. I thought is someone playing a joke on me? But uh, usually, when you scan the channels, you hear kids messing around. You know, twelve-year-olds going, "I can't hear you. Come on down to my," you know, and they're playing around. But these were two serious guys they sounded like they were at least middle-aged they didn't sound young and the guy said yeah man he goes i've been having all kinds of ufos flying over my house i gotta get them on video why didn't you jump in on the conversation man well you know you're not supposed to but i did go breaker breaker you know i'm from the official ham thing and i said hey uh, where are you guys seeing these and i heard nothing they went off air you should have said you know, something like this is the FBI. That's what you do. Really freak them out. Oh, no, no. You get in trouble. The FCC monitors all these. And I remember once years ago hearing someone screw around. They were talking about doing something and they started swearing. And a guy came on. I thought it was a joke. He goes, this is the FCC. You're doing unauthorized broadcast. And he was like a real authoritative voice. So uh, uh, John wants to know if you have a Faraday cage at the house. 
No, no, I can't afford anything like that. Uh, <laughs> all I have is an electric bicycle for when the stuff hits the fan and two mountain bikes. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally picture you uh, uh, like, uh, what's his name, in uh, 2012. Um, who who played uh, the uh, the radio guy that was up on the hill? Man, who was that? Oh man, who played the radio guy? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that over to Twitter really quick in the chat room. We'll who, get the answer. Who played the radio guy in 2012? When uh, you remember he got he got hit by uh, uh, the tidal waves and everything as they came up to the mountain, and man, he was I broadcasting. He had a he had a motorhome. Man, what? Ah oh, man, I can't remember. All right. Well, anyway, All anyway, right. I'm saving my money to get night vision goggles if I can afford them next time I have a little bit of cash. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're doing the same thing, man. Uh, we're, okay, would you please repeat for those of us that tuned in a little late, when are you going to be broadcasting, uh, was it Sunday or Saturday from the expo up there? No, Friday. Friday. What time? I'm really glad that you listened to the show, Dino. We've announced it for the last month. This Friday, busy, you know, and I'm get I'm getting older, and I'm getting ready to go back on the reservation in winter here. So I've been busy listening in the background. Okay, well, August twelfth, this Friday, seven to ten, same normal time, and uh, there you go. Okay, it'll and be Dave Friday. Dave Cruz is going to broadcast. Or less? Are they going to broadcast on Sunday or something? I have. Uh, the, I think that's when they broadcast. Okay, that's what was confusing me. Okay, that's all right, all right. Dino. All right, I I don't want the hat, but I'd like the new T-shirt. So I'm willing to trade one of my black T-shirts. I like the new one. All you got to do is drive off that mountain of yours and drive to Sacramento and come hang out with us. Well, I would, except the next day I go back on the reservation. I'm back to work full time, and it's not a good uh, timing for me. See, the reservation isn't that what the CIA calls their campus? The reservation. Well, well that's what I'm going. I'm going to a campus. Man, <laughs> okay. and you you make me nervous, Dino. All right, Dino, be safe. We'll see you Friday All night, right. man. You right be here. safe yourself. We'll listen to you. You got it. Dino tried to put himself in the running for the hat, and then he turns around and says no. He doesn't want the hat. He wants a new shirt. But see, the thing is, is we don't make hemp products yet uh, because that's what uh, Dino would definitely be wearing. <laughs> He'd be wearing a, a a hemp shirt. This is Fade to Black, 323-825-5045. If you're on hold, stay right there. 323-825-5045. I'm trying to give away Fade to Black hat, number one, and I have it right here in the bunker. Taking your calls. It's Fader Night. I'll be right back. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Foodforliberty.com sells high-quality, storable foods from Numana. And right now, take advantage of our summer special. Purchase two family packs and we'll send you a pro pure water pitcher, a $70 value, free. This premium pitcher is ideal for use with just about any water source and removes more contaminants than other brands. And it comes with a filter that lasts up to two full years. Whether you need to be prepared in the event of an emergency, you're an outdoor sports enthusiast, New Mana is known for high-quality, great-tasting, GMO-free, super-nutritious food with no chemical preservatives. And with a 25-year shelf life, you can't beat the feeling of being food secure when you need it most. Go to foodforliberty.com right now for great-tasting, high-quality, storable foods from New Mana. Buy two family packs and get the Pro Pure Water Pitcher free. It makes good sense to be prepared. Get it at foodforliberty.com. Did you ever turn to your radio for your favorite talk show to find that it's been preempted for this? In the air, the deep right center. Back goes Lewis to the wall, and it's out of here! 
or this. And I'm ashamed of you, Hillary, for voting for it. Do you have a favorite talk radio program that's not available in your city? Just go to TalkStreamLive.com for links to the best streaming talk radio shows. At TalkStream Live, you will find live talk shows 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All your favorites are here. With such a large selection, you will also discover some new favorites. On the go and still want to listen? With the mobile smartphone, simply type TalkStream Live on your internet browser. Now you can take internet radio with you. You will also find hundreds of music, news, and sports streams. Best of all, the TalkStream Live directory is free and there's never a login required. Remember TalkStreamLive.com, the fastest route between you and your favorite talk radio show. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back to Fade to Black. It's Fader Night. Taking your calls all night long. I am trying to give away Fade to Black hat number one. No joke. Man, these things are good looking too. I got to tell you. And this one, this one is special because it's number one off the production line. I walked out with it today and uh, posted some pictures of it. Yeah, that's right. The rest of them are all boxed up uh, and on their way to... uh, the Awareness Life Expo. And if you'd like to go to the Expo, give me a call tonight. I will uh, get you set up with passes for the weekend, and you can come and watch us uh, do the live Fade to Black broadcast this Friday. Um, And also, Karen McIntyre, I'm just going to say this right now, on Twitter, and you can follow me right now on Twitter, at Radio. She just posted um, a picture of sand cats, and I saw the article today. I was going to make the announcement. I was going to do do the report. They thought that that they were extinct and they have surfaced again. Sand cats. And I got to say for wild cats, they look pretty cute and they they thought they were extinct. But uh, I have uh, seen a bunch of pictures today. I'm looking at the ones that uh, Karen just posted and uh, very, very cool. Also uh, Dino's phone call about the, uh, um, about the walkie talkies and somebody just posted, uh, the movie signs, right? Yes. But, uh, you can't forget about stranger things and the radio shack, realistic, uh, uh, old school, uh, walkie talkies in that too, as well. Um, now where was I, I was actually going somewhere with that. Anyway, in an attempt to quell technophiles worries, Swedish researchers found that you can safely read off a smartphone before bed and still sleep like a baby. Now, at least if you would spend the entire next day in bright sunlight or the preceding day. Now, listen to me. They, they, they studied 14 people who did. And the study is published in the scientific journal Sleep Medicine. And it suggests that two hours of evening reading on a tablet does not alter sleep, but only in, in the case of daytime bright light exposure. Now, listen, <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but uh, the neuroscientists at Uppsala University said that they surveyed 14 young men and women first exposing them to bright light for hours during the afternoon and then asking them to read for two hours in the evening. One half of the group was reading off of a tablet and the other half from a paper book, analog. In the morning following the evening reading, all participants were asked about 
the time it took for them to fall asleep, how well they slept, and how well rested they felt. After comparing the results for two weeks, researchers discovered that the two groups' levels of melatonin, you know, the hormone affecting human sleep and the, and the wake cycle, was the same for both the gadget users and the old-fashioned, old-school analog readers. So there you go. And I do it every night, man. I got my tablet in bed. Rita goes old school. I don't. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, it's Kevin from Vancouver. I'll take that hat. <laughs> hey, Kevin from Vancouver. How are you, man? Good. Okay. First time caller, do I get a shirt too? Uh, you you got to give me a story, man. You got a question? You got to you got to bring your A game. This is a very special hat, Kevin. <laughs> I want to know about the uh, the planet. You just found that big thing in front of. I haven't heard nothing about it. Which planet? Whatever the the uh, the thing that was blocking the light of the planet. I don't know what it's called. Oh, you're talking about. Uh, uh, oh man, I, yeah. I don't have the uh, number in front of me, but. Uh, uh the that they suspected that it had uh um an alien megastructure built right, around it right, because right, it was right. blocking out 20 per, 22% of the sunlight right yeah and yeah. uh no they 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 focused um and i want to say that was kib Oh, man, I can't remember the number. You would think that I would remember it because I reported on it so much. They focused um, a bunch of uh, uh, radio telescopes and, uh, and, and Kepler focused back on it for about two to three weeks. We're getting the same results. But what they ultimately said in the end, which I don't buy, by the way, that they think that it was the trail of a comet or a group of comets that was blocking out the sunlight and not some alien megastructure that was uh, built around it. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not buying into that. Um, I, I just think that that's, a, that's an excuse for not having the right answers. I, do, I will say this. For them to come out um, and say, the scientists and the astronomers coming out and saying that it, you know, it was uh, possible uh, alien structures that were built around the planet. I thought that they jumped at that too quickly. Yeah. Um, and and so did they? Did they spill the beans on it? And they didn't mean to do that. And and then they backed off of it and went with this comet story and comet trails blocking out. Uh, one seemed like a cover story for the other. Um, right. But since then, we've had total silence on the entire subject, and it was a big story there for a while. But yeah. uh, that's that's what they're saying now that it's that it was a comet. Well, thank you. All right, Kevin. Thank you so much. I got you right here, and I got your number. You're in the running for the hat. Thank you for the question. Okay, thanks, partner. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, yeah, Kevin, uh, we'll get something in the mail to you, too. And if you're listening right now, and I heard me in the background anyway, uh, I was going to announce this at the end of the show. Just write Rita, and uh, we'll definitely get something in the mail to you. All right. That uh, was K-I-B. There you go. All right. 323-825-5045. I'm trying to give away the first black hat. Yeah, the fade to black hat. And it's right here with me in the bunker right now. 323-825-5045. North Korean workers. Now, check this out. I I don't have a problem reporting on this story, even if it's not true, because I don't think North Korea is going to come after me and sue me. But I, I would love for them to, because apparently North Korean workers are being given methamphetamine, ice, in the hope that it will speed up a major construction project. Now, this is according to reports right now that are coming out of North Korea. Now, let me finish here before you say anything. Project managers in the city's capital of Pyongyang are, are said to be using so much or are under so much pressure to finish this job on time that they've resorted to 
giving construction workers ice, methamphetamines. Now, there have been reports that North Korea has been manufacturing this for, uh, you know, decades. And it's one of their biggest exports out of the country. They don't make any money off of heroin anymore. They export methamphetamines, right? Well, uh, hundreds of thousands of North Korean citizens have been roped in to finish the project, which consists of a 70-floor skyscraper and 60 apartment blocks. It was approved earlier this year by Kim Jong-un in defiance of all of those tough sanctions. And he's trying to prove to everybody that the hermit state can get something done under sanctions. A construction source in Pyongyang told Radio Free Asia, and I'm quoting here, project managers are now openly providing drugs to construction workers so that they will work faster. There you go. Sue me, Kim Jong-un. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy, this is Bob. Hey, Bob, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I'm doing good, Bob. What you got tonight? Yeah. You want that All hat? Right. I know. This is for the fears, but I'm calling about Gobekli Tepe. <laughs> okay. okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I was. Um, if you ever look at the carvings on the statues and everything, to me it almost looks like a meeting place. Like it could have been a meeting place for many different cultures because you see remnants of Sumerian, Aztec, uh, even Egyptian things. You know, in the carvings that. Like may, or maybe it's uh, where a lot of these cultures originate from. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I've thought of, and thank you for the phone call, Bob, because I think uh, that reference to, to Gobekli Tepe is there. And one of them is this. The, uh, the founding uh, kings in Egypt were Scorpion and Scorpion II, right? You've right. Seen, you know, you've seen the movie The Scorpion King. Now, there is no accurate dating for Scorpion 1, the original Scorpion King. We don't know. There isn't any date. We don't know when he existed. We do know that there are a couple of uh, references on some uh, uh, walls and some caverns uh, in, uh, on the side of a mountain that <clears throat> depict the scorpion. And I think it's pretty trippy that there is a scorpion on one of the pillars there. Now, could it reference exactly? Could it reference the zodiac? I don't know. Could it reference the Scorpion King, Scorpion One? It's a possibility. It's not. You know, Gobekli Tepe is not far from Egypt. You know, no. uh, would you walk there? Yeah. Well, you would make it eventually, but um, but it 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 uh, in the scope of planet Earth, it's a stone's throw. Well, and one I, of them it shows uh, camels. Yes. So they could row camels. Well, it could be, you know. Now, you know, ships in the desert. So, well, and there's a lot of there's a lot of different animals that are represented there that I'm not too True. sure if they were indigenous to the area. And um, and is that a tiger on the side of the T pillar? Is it a jaguar? Is it a cat at all? Is it some crazy? Uh, uh, a chupacabra, you know, I don't know, but well, it's like the one that looks like a monkey resembles, uh, something from India today. Yeah. Now, were they, were they indigenous to the area or were people coming by and they were collecting the information and had a little bit of a, a zoo going on there? I, I think all of those are possibilities, but that scorpion right. is obvious. And it wasn't a reference to the Scorpion King uh, back in Egypt. I think that's a, a that's a great phone call, Bob. And I oh, really no appreciate problem, it. Jimmy. <laughs> and a, and a, and a Gobekli Tepe call on a night like this always puts you in the running. Thank you so much, Bob. Oh, no problem. You have a good one, man. Yeah, you too. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hello, Mr. Church, Ben Trout, Bristol, Tennessee. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Ben? Man, I am good. I just uh, put in a late night at work, rolling into the house and catching uh, Fader Night, a rare Wednesday Fader Night. How hey, about that? Hey, Ben, let, let's get something perfectly clear here. You don't have a job. Okay, you Dude. okay? You just get <laughs> you get a paycheck. Yes, okay, but man, I wouldn't call you know, and I know you work really hard, okay? And keep telling yourself that. But I know the truth. 
you have beaten life okay <laughs> you, <laughs> you you are a, you're in a position where you can honestly kick back and go you know i can't believe they pay me for this man because uh somebody pinched me so there you go. I'm telling you what, Jimmy. If it is a job, it's worth it. Oh, you know, every can't. job, every job has its pleasure. <laughs> just like you, I and you sometimes you can sit there and listen and talk with all these wonderful researchers and all these great phaeronauts out there, and and kick back and listen and and explore all the the great theories and minds that are out there, and and you have to enjoy that too. I envy that. Ah, uh, okay. So you know what? Both of us are guilty. How's that? Are, yeah. Okay. That I. I'm in. Okay. I agree with All you. All right. Hey, man, uh, what do you, what's going on with Junior this season? Yeah. Wow. Hey, that's a that that's that's a that's a tough deal. I kind of feel for him. Um, you know, of course, we have our our race coming up at Bristol next week. Yep. As a matter of fact, next Saturday night, and then Junior will not be part of that race. Uh, no, Jeff is, Gordon. Uh, yeah, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, him. Jeff Gordon. And uh, are they going to change the number on the car? Uh, yeah, it, it won't be the. It'll be a. I guess it'll be an eighty-eight car, but it, it won't be a you know a number twenty-four car. Uh, but um, but yeah, so um, you know it's tough. He had a couple of knocks there, you know, dating back to Daytona and and I, and I guess Pocono or, or or wherever it was. But, right. um, but yeah, he's he, he's having some issues, and as long as he has that the uh, um, dizziness and things like that, and until the doctors give him the, the clearance, he's he's. Not not good to get back in the car right now. Man, man, man. It's tough. That is tough. Well, you know, really see, the is. thing is, all the junior fans out there, um, uh, uh, of which it's I am nation. one, I am one, okay, and I'll, I'll go out right. there and say that right now. Um, and it is painful. It is painful to be a junior fan. It is harsh, man. And it, we all, it's it, not only is it like, um, has it come down to a junior? We'll move on here off of the subject in a second. But not only is it a case of every season, the start of the season, okay, this is junior's year, man. This is the year mm-hmm. where it's all going to come together, right? This is the year. It's actually, it, that's gone away. Now it's just come down to this is the race, man. This is the one. We're going to start here, and then we're going to put it all together. And it's it's heartbreaking to be a junior fan. Man, it's just uh, – and the, the other thing is uh, when, to be a junior fan is if uh, this has happened uh, year after year after year, race after race after race. Dude is in second place, and there's 10 laps to go. And he doesn't put his foot in the gas, man. It's just like he just hangs. It's just like you're waiting, you know, you know, and it's just like, uh, is he happy? You know, why isn't he just putting it in just a little more, you know, breaking a little bit later, putting his foot in a little sooner and gaining and, and making a run? And that's what we are as junior fans. You know, it, it's just, yeah. it's painful. It's painful to be a junior fan. Okay, so enough of that, Ben. Uh, we could do we could do NASCAR all night long. That but, could be another show. <laughs> but but it's time for you to, long discussion. it's time for you to earn the hat. What's up? Man, I, you know, I don't, I, I just called, like, I just walked in and literally just started listening and called the tail end of the hat. And I've heard a couple of, couple of previous callers and, um, I, re- I really don't have anything, you know, but I, I will tell you this. There's a there's a couple of uh, instances, you know, I look back, you know, through my childhood. One story that I'll share with you, which is which is really interesting, and it's one that when my family, I have a rather large family, and when we gather, it's, it's a story that we often revisit, and I remember it well, dating back to 1975. Um, uh, like I said, large family. My mother's uh, sister, so my aunt, passed away. And in, uh, in May of 1975, and she had breast cancer. And uh, my mom was the youngest in her family, and she was kind of a caretaker. And uh, the day that that my aunt passed away, um, it, you know, I, and, I, and I think we all realize this. We've all been around instances like when somebody is near death, and they kind of get that feeling that they know that they're slipping away, and the, you know those those precious last breaths or, you know, or, or few and, and time is near. And my aunt looked to my uh, mom and she said, I'm getting ready to go. I want somebody to go with me. And my mom being the kind hearted person that she is and still is today, we celebrated her 
ninetieth uh, birthday uh, two weeks ago, and which is it's great to have her around. She's wonderful, and it's 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 a blessing to have to have a parent around that long. But my mom told her, um, "I'll go with you, honey. I'll go with you." All right. So anyway, later that afternoon, my aunt passed away, and uh, and then uh, that night um, at the house, and this this kind of reminds me. It's going to be related to the shadow figure, if you want to call it that. But um, I was in a room. I was in my own bedroom, uh, you know, separate from my mom and dad's bedroom. And uh, we get this, you know, I, I, I'm I'm, awa- I'm uh, awakened by this noise, and I hear my dad saying, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" Uh, so um, the the long the short end of the story is, is, is my mom was laying there, and uh, and she was uh, woken up. And at the foot of her bed was this just black. And the way my dad described it, he said it was darker than dark. He said that he's never seen something that dark. Um, there was really no night lights on in the house. There was maybe, maybe some ambient lights on other rooms or something like that. But this, uh, this figure it was at the foot of the bed. And, uh, and my mom, my mom, you know, she uh, grew up in a Christian household. My dad was a Methodist minister. And, uh, and, uh, my mom, you know, said, it, she said that she thought it death was coming after her, but I don't necessarily think that, that was true. But I do think that there was a spirit there in that house, uh, that night. But, um, so it, it startled my mom and my dad, uh, she grabbed my dad and my dad woke up and, and he, you know, used some Bible scripture and, you know, basically in the name of Jesus, you know, he said, uh, I command you to leave here, and and then the figure just dissipated. But uh, but what, what was, if uh, he uh, was what, interesting? Yeah, totally. What if he was in the name of Jesus, uh, shooing away your aunt? <laughs> I mean, right? I know. Yeah. I mean, really. That's and, and I we have had that very same conversation. I was like, well, what if what if it was my aunt coming back to come? <laughs> right. And exactly. Saying, Everything is okay. Everything is okay. I'm in a great place now. Right, right. And, and my dad just kicked her out of the house. <laughs> and did, did the did the spirit ever come back? No, no. I see, no, never. see, and she's upset, man. <laughs> she's up, <laughs> oh, you want to play That's it like that? that it, yeah, yeah. It's wow. So funny that you say that. Oh, and, uh, but, but anyway, it, you know, throw that in there. Uh, but but and, and then the other thing I, that I was going to share with you, I really enjoyed. Um, you know me. You know my procedure. I, I catch the show on the following day, except for mm-hmm. uh, it's like this. But you're um, and forgive me because I'm not going to get the name right. But Brett, you had on last night. Oh yeah, Brett um, Luter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right after Richard Bleep and Um <laughs> but, but yeah, Brett was great, and I really bought into what when you guys brought up um, Antarctica, and he was talking about his theory surrounding. Um, you know, uh, the Nazi, you know, group there. And then, um, yeah, that was interesting. You know, our group, yeah, you know, the, the operation that we sent down there and they got kind of turned around and blown out of the, out of the water and, and basically, you know, forced back, uh, which, which you know, was a military operation. But, but I you know, with what he was saying about, um, you know, them having that space there and, uh, and you all talking about, you know, if there's a place to be where you want to hide and have a secret operation, a secret base. And, I mean, that that's definitely the place to do it. But that was a very interesting point that he brought up. Yeah, here. Brett, he, he, he is – he's so smart. And uh, probably um, – it was uh, maybe about six months ago now. Um, we're at a conference, and uh, – we're at the hotel after, uh, you know, doing our thing all day. And we got a group of people together. It was about 20, 25 of us. We sat in a circle. We took over the lounge at uh, the hotel. And Brett was sitting a couple of people away from me. And and I'm listening to him uh, in, in this conversation that he was having. And I just kicked back. He, you know, I, I, well, he's probably listening now. He's going to find out. But anyway, I'm, I'm just listening to Brett, and I'm like, this dude is freaking me out right now. He's he's smart. He's emotional. He's conscious. Um, and he's spiritual. Saying, yeah, yeah, very. And he was saying just these things, 
and I, I I was kicking back. And I was like, man, this guy is on point, man. And um, he's just a really interesting guy. And if you ever get a chance, uh, and it, it'll happen, but if you ever get the chance to come and hang out with him, you need to go and do that and, and just have a conversation with him. He's just a brilliant guy. Um, and, and I was hoping last night that the conversation was going to be like the conversations that him and I have had privately and the, you know, the ones that I've seen him have with people because he has got something to say. And I'm glad that you really picked up on that last night. He's a very, very smart guy. Very cool dude, too. I mean, just a cool guy, but very educated and very well researched. So thank you for picking up on that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Very in tune, very in tune with uh, with himself, uh, you know, personally. And then it, it does. It sounds like he has a, a lot of good things to say. Well, man, I, I appreciate you taking my call tonight. Keep up the good work. And uh, I'll continue listening, and we'll chat with you. You're the best. Sometimes you're in the near future, brother. Absolutely, Ben. You're in the running. I'll talk. <laughs> all right, man. You all right, have man. a good one, brother. Hey, man, and have a good race next weekend. All right? All right, man. We'll do it. All right. Take care, Bob. You got it. Thank you. That's Ben Trout from Bristol Motor Speedway, vice president and uh, fan of the show and just a really smart guy. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. <laughs> you're live right now. All right, guys. Sorry for you. Okay. What's your, what's, uh, okay, we have three minutes. What's your name? My name's Danny. Danny? Dan, yeah, Dan, Danny. So, story is, my mom grew up in, in the Hitler days. Her dad um, fought under Hitler was so he hit by an attack and lived through, saved only by a Frenchman, say the German, and the first person born when he got back from war was my mother, so then I have this guy to thank uh, for me to be born. Hey, hey Dan, can... Dan, Dan, listen to me really quick. Um, uh, you've got to get off the speakerphone so we can understand you. Okay, sorry. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So I, I, I don't understand to this day how I've made it through. My mom has got to be some savior uh, of some kind. I, I, I mean, there's too many stories to go back at why she is always there, and I've made it as far as I have. She's the first person that was born after a miraculous story of my uh, grandfather being saved by a Frenchman of all, saving a German who was blown by a grenade, came back, leg blown. She was the first person born after. And I, a couple of times I've caught her under her breath kind of saying, she would explain it to me when she's on her deathbed. So it's just kind of a funny story. I mean, she knows more and he knows more than they're going to say, and she won't say it until she's on her way out. Really? Why do yeah, you? Yeah, so he, he, he fought like in the trenches, and he saw a lot during World War II. Why do you think uh, that you is, know. Dan? Why do you think that is, Dan? That that happens? Yeah. I think there's a whole lot going on. I think there's a whole lot that he knew and that she knows, and that she won't say until she's on the way out. But she's always been there when. I mean, I should be dead 10 times over. Right. And she's always been there. And I, I asked her one time, she was half asleep or whatnot, and she said, I said, why are you so good to me? Why are you always there? Why do I deserve you? And she said, I'll tell you on my deathbed. Wow. And it's, just one of, it's just one of those things. So, yeah. And, and, and by the way, I just, I just got back from East Germany, and I was in East Berlin, and I went to a Turkish bar, and they wouldn't let me in because I wasn't Turkish. And I said, go back to Tempe. Jimmy says, go back to Kepi. And they didn't even know what it was, so I'm more Turkish than they are. <laughs> Dan, thank you for the phone call. And I got yeah. to I gotta tell you, the, the go back to Kepi, it was the icing on the cake uh, on this phone call. Thank you so much, my brother. Yeah. Take care, Jimmy. Hey, give my best to your mom. All right. All we'll right. Do. I'll talk to you. All right. Mom knows everything and has always been there for him. But the the topper on that, obviously, he walked into a Turkish bar and said, Gobekli Tepe, you got to love that. This is Fade to Black. Thank you, Dan, for the phone call. It's Wednesday night. It's Fader night. I'm trying to give away the first black hat. I'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. 
KGRA Radio. Intelligent Talk. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you tired of brown rust stains on your toilets, sinks, and clothes? Does your water smell and taste bad? Don't live with these problems anymore. HydroCare's revolutionary well water systems, available at Wave Home Solutions, gives you clean, healthy, great-tasting water from every faucet. They remove iron, hydrogen sulfide, sediment, and many other contaminants that are distasteful and damaging your fixtures. You'll be amazed how fresh and clean well water can be. Satisfaction guaranteed. Go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Fade or not, things are never what they seem. For the past century, forbidden subjects such as UFOs, backward engineering, human abductions, secret space programs, underground bases, suppressed free energy devices, and other fantastic notions have tested the human mind, forcing it to decipher fact from fiction. Chronicling what he calls the alternative narrative, author Brad Olson gets down to the middle of it all in his best-selling book, Future Esoteric, now released in a second edition by CCC Publishing. And now, you can get Future Esoteric at a special price, plus another free book by just using the promo code JIMMY when you check out. Just click on the Future Esoteric or CCC Publishing banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Teppy. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. Going old school tonight. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Nothing but back-to-back phone calls. The best phone call tonight is going to get Fade to Black Hat number one. I have it right here with me in the bunker, and it will be signed when the winner gets it. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hi, Jimmy. This is Ty from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Hey, Ty from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It's good to say, you know, Alberta, because somebody may confuse, you know, it could, it could be another country. That's right. It could be. Yeah. yeah it, it was just a joke, Ty. <laughs> I know. All right. All right. Uh, I like to be thorough. Yes, you are. You are totally. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Some of the best times of my life have been in Edmonton, by the way, but that's another broadcast when the kids aren't listening. Okay. All right, Ty, it's on you, man. You're you're in you're making a run for the hat, I take it. 
Yeah, or a book. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. I really like that, but I, I wouldn't mind a book, too. Okay. But I, I have a question about the Black Knight satellite. Oh, okay. Go ahead. And I'm just wondering, have you ever seen the movie, 1988 movie, They Live? Absolutely. Oh, you kidding? It's it's uh, it's a documentary. <laughs> I love that yeah, movie. Yes. I'm just wondering if the Black Knight satellite is doing something like that in the movie. Because it seems like the more we progress in time, we're getting more violent and and more wars. I mean, we haven't seen this much violence since World War II. I would love, uh, and and since we're doing all of the uh, private uh, uh, cube sats, right, um, uh, that are being sent up right now uh, under civilian control, right, not NASA or government control, uh, with cameras, right, and is it is it possible that we'll finally be able to uh, see it for ourselves without the distorted lens and eyes of, you know, NASA and the NSA and so forth? Um, and we'll finally, you know, see it and then maybe get some type of disclosure. Also, maybe uh, with uh, one of the private CubeSats to uh, communicate with it or to pick up something off of it. Um, I, I, that would be very exciting. I think that it's there. Um, I think the evidence is overwhelming that it is there. Um, I just want to know what, what it is and where it came from. I wonder if that's why NASA TV is, uh, going to be ending the run. Did you, did you hear me talk about that last night? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it... Go ahead. Sorry. I said, isn't that interesting? Uh, yes, I thought that was very interesting, considering a lot of people who follow and watch for, watch out for unusual things happening in the scene. Yeah. And we, we seem to be getting here and there some interesting objects in view that don't seem to be knowing what it is, you know. Yeah, and, uh, and thank you for the phone call, Ty. I'll leave you with this. Have you seen the Pepsi 10-minute film about uh, the Black Knight satellite? Have you seen that? Yes, I have, actually, yes. Yeah, it, so uh, there is something going on, and for, for Pepsi to spend all of that money on that production, number one. Number two, for them to say at the very beginning of that short film, everything that you're about to see is true, right? It's fact. And for them to present it like that is is uh, a message. And I don't know what's going on. I, I, I know, I feel in my bones that the Black Knight satellite itself is real. Um, who, what, when, where, and why, all of those W's, uh, I, we need to find out and find out soon. Is it, is it similar to They Live? I love that. And thank you for the phone call, Ty. Well, you're welcome. And uh, we'll get something in the mail to you. Write Rita and uh, get that going, okay? Just write Rita, and we'll make it happen. Will do. You and uh, the Fader Nots have a good night, eh? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, eh? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ty. <laughs> Take care. All the best. Bye-bye. That's what I'm talking about. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Hey, Jimmy. It's Eric, the Awakening Man. Hey, Eric. How are you, man? I'm doing good, I- I got a really good old school story. It's well, totally that, a true story that I have to share with you. Well, you you need to explain this license plate. Is this license plate real? It's real. That's going to be part two, and I'll make it brief because I know there's a lot of callers, so you know I don't carry on very much. Okay, so <laughs> this is a real. This is not a Photoshop license plate. This okay, I'll a- tell you that story first. So here's the deal. I, I okay. So my goal was to write a book, and then I thought oh, I'm not a writer, but I'll. I like to film stuff and take pictures, so maybe I'll do a documentary. So I decided I'm going to do a documentary, and I'm going to be traveling to Idaho and Washington, New Mexico, possibly even Florida to go visit with John Polk, because there's a couple people out there that uh, their story needs to be told. So I said, okay, I don't want to fly all over the country. I'm going to buy a nice car, and I'm going to travel, and I'm just going to go on the lo- as I go along and, and do it kind of do it that way, kind of Blair Witch Project style. So I found this uh, car, it's black BMW 750. It, it, it actually was in Beverly Hills. I was there a few nights ago, and I, I bought it off this German guy who was the original owner. 
I'm in love with the car already, so I thought, I got to do something with this car. So I said, ah. So I went to the DMV, and I said, I want to get some personalized plates. So I went, that's too black. And they looked it up, and it had not been taken, of course. So I signed up. I paid the 50 bucks, and now I own it. I'll have it in about eight weeks on my car. Oh, man, you beat me to it. You know that, don't you? I did. Okay. You're going to want this car one day, though, so I might raffle it off or something. You never know. <laughs> so what year is the uh, 750? The 750 is a 2006. It only had 109,000 miles on it. And here's what sold me. The guy that owned it was the original owner, and he uh, he took it to the Hollywood uh, Beverly Hills dealer, and he said that the factory recommends you change the oil every 15,000 miles. He says, no, in Germany, we don't do it that way. We do synthetic every 5,000 miles. So this guy has put synthetic oil, uh, oil changes every 5,000 miles. This car runs like it's brand freaking new. Everything, transmission, interior, exterior. There's, not, there's one little tiny ding on the very front of the hood, but I'm going to get a little bra and put it on there so no one can see it. But there's no scratches, no, no dents. Is the, I mean, it looks uh, like is, it's almost run right up the showroom. I'm not BSing either. Is the 750, was, was that a V12? This is a, uh, it's a... 5-liter, 4.4, uh, it's the LI, which is the L I learned is 5.5 inches longer than the standard 750. Yeah, that's right. It's a long wheelbase. Oh, the 760. But no, it hauls ass. I mean, it's 345 horsepower. I mean, yeah. getting on and off the freeway, it was like, you know, no no problems. Yeah, I think the, seven, the 760 was the V12, right? But anyway, so it's yeah, a 750, 2006, oh. beautiful car. I know exactly black what Black with black is. tinted windows. He's even got those little shades, those custom shades that you, that are on the back window and also the side windows. So, you know, it's and it's got the tan leather and it's got the wood grain. And, I mean, there's no – it's just uh, – Oh, man, I'm jealous. The 19-inch nice alloys and the whole night. I've never had a really nice car before. I've had some nice cars, but and it was used. I didn't pay a lot of money for it. I mean, the blue book on it's only 13000 which is a lot, but it's not a ridiculous amount. No, not for that car, which was probably no. almost a hundred grand when it was new. It, yeah, ninety seven grand, brand new. I looked it up. I could never afford that. But anyway, <laughs> I thought, you know, this is a sweet car. I got to get this car. Okay. So, so anyway, so here's my plan on that. So, uh, so I'll have F2B, F2 Black on the back of the car. I'll be traveling around and, you know. If I ever get stuck out there in New Mexico and you see, and I get pulled over and they say, hey, what are you doing out here, son? I'll say, hey, I'm filming a documentary for Fade to Black. You know, Jimmy Church, call him up. I'm good. Don't worry about me. Yeah, that'll get you <laughs> That'll get you arrested in like 48 states. <laughs> no, but anyway, it'll be fun. But uh, the, 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 the old school story, so I grew up in Silicon Valley. You mentioned that earlier. I, I was born and raised in Los Gatos, uh, Campbell, which is, and then you've got San Jose, you got Cupertino, Sunnyvale, Palo Alto, all right in that in that region right there, and, and all the big wigs, you know, all the Apple dudes. They lived in, in Palo Alto, Cupertino, uh, Sunnyvale. That was where all the, the up and coming in the '80s. That's where be, that was where the, all the Apple dudes kind of hung out. So um, in my early 20s, I, I got a job selling uh, in-home sales solar panels. Back in the day. If a family purchased solar panels for their roof, they got a 50% tax credit. So, the, so our pitch was, um, you know, let us come to your home. We're going to do a little brief presentation. And for in exchange for your viewpoints and opinions on the solar energy issue, we're going to give you a free set of knives. So people would say, oh, okay, sure, fine. You know, come on over. It's a half an hour presentation. Of course, it was never half an hour. If you want to close the deal, it took about two hours. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, so uh, one night the, the girls call me you know, and they say, okay, we got an appointment for you. It's in Sunnyvale. You know? And I said, okay, great. So, you know, I'm all in my suit and tie and I get my car and I drove, drive over and knock on the door. And uh, these two guys, there's three guys there, but two guys that opened the door. I didn't know it at the time, but I know now because looking back and reflecting on what happened, I know for sure it was Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. They shared a home together in Sunnyvale. It was an Eichler home. So they, so they bring me in the house, and, and so I'm going to do my presentation. Usually it's done at the kitchen table, but they bring me into the garage, and I was blown away. They had a double-car garage, and they had computers stacked all the way, I'm not shitting you, all the way around the entire garage, all the way around the perimeter, all the way to the ceiling, and then down the center row. I mean, it was just packed with computers, and this was way before computers were what they are now. Right. So they sit me down in a little chair. And they say, okay, you know, do your presentation. They've got video cameras set up, and they're filming my presentation. And I'm only like 23, 24 years old. I was nervous. 
I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to do, you know, but you know, they're like encouraging me, you know, go ahead. You're doing fine. You know, do your presentation. So, you know, I did my little presentation, but you know, they, they weren't going to buy anything. They just wanted to play. They were just playing with me. They just wanted me to come over and play around with their little computer setup. So it was a no close, but, but it was a true story. So it was kind of cool looking, you know, back, you know, 30 years, you know, thinking, wow, I met these guys before they were millionaires. Were they smoking weed? Uh, not while I was there. <laughs> Who knows, though? But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was that whole area was pretty cool. Uh, thinking back on the cell phone era, um, the 49ers, uh, they, used to, they used to practice there at Stanford uh, back in the day, back when they played a candlestick. And there was a, that was when uh, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice and uh, a bunch of other crazy guys, they used to go out to the clubs right in my neighborhood, and they would party, you know, after the games. So uh, the, a lot of these guys, these football player dudes, had these, uh, they were illegal at the time, but they were these cell phones. They weren't like we have now. They were like in a, like a little uh, suitcase. Right. You open it up. I don't know if you remember back in the early 80s, they had these cell phones that were like the portable phones you carry in a suitcase. And they were they somehow figured out a way to chip these things. So they were making all these calls illegally and they didn't have to pay for them. So there was this one guy that, that was kind of running around with these dudes that was selling these phones to these football players because they were rich. And so I got a hold of one for a few weeks. He goes, yeah, I'll try this phone out. You know, you don't have to pay for it. All the calls are free. You know, if you want it, it's 900 cash. Just don't tell anybody about it. So, you know, I, I tried it out for a few weeks, but I got kind of scared. I didn't want to have some device that I was running around with that was illegal. But but anyway, that was one of my old school stories. True story. Yeah, that's that's funny. And uh, you're in the running. You're in the running. You know, these have been some really good calls tonight, Eric. Well, I know. I figured I'd wait till the end, so hopefully somebody can uh, come in with a good one here after I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, I can't wait to see the car. And, and when you uh, get the plates, I know you're going to take pictures, but I can't wait to see yeah, I'll it. come down and visit you. I'll take you and Reed out to dinner if you want. Absolutely. Did you There's hear that? your room. <laughs> did, did you hear that, Rita? All right. Thank you so much, Eric, and be safe, and we'll see you Friday night. Okay, take care, buddy. Yeah, Good night. Th- thank you got the fade to black uh, plates and uh, the pictures have been posted all night in Twitter and I gotta tell you man I'm pretty jealous because the plate is perfect because it says F2 black on the new California retro uh, old school black plates with they which they finally brought back when I first uh, moved to California uh, they that was the year they were making the transition from uh, the black plates to the blue plates, which everybody was complaining about, right? And uh, and then right after that, the blue plates went out, and the blue plates now are all retro, right? If you have a blue plate ca- uh, car, which is funny to me, but uh, now they brought back the old old school black plates. I've, you see them a lot now. And uh, but if you're going to get a black plate, you want fade to black on it. Let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on fade to black. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? I'm doing good. Who's this? This is Cindy from North Carolina. Hey, Cindy from North Carolina. How are you? I'm doing great. Okay. And I got through. Yay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The the phone lines are completely jammed. And I apologize to everybody, but uh, I'll try to get everybody in. So, all yeah, right, Cindy. It took a while, but I got through. Hey, are you giving away tickets tonight? Uh, to uh, the Awareness Life Expo? Yes. Can you make it? I can. Okay, then you're in. How many, uh, are you coming out by yourself? I have a friend with me. She's okay. 24. Okay. So I got a youngster with me. <laughs> right. Yeah, that does sound young to me. All right, you're in. Um, when are you going to arrive? Uh, Friday. Okay, so you'll make it in time for the fade to black uh, thing. Okay, so we'll get you uh, a pair of gold passes for the weekend. Hot dog. Thank you so much. I can't uh, wait to see you. Okay. Uh, in the background. Now, was that easy? <laughs> love you. Okay. That was so easy. <laughs> I heard the we love you in the background. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cindy, I can't wait to meet you. And we- now we're... And that that uh, Friday night. Now, listen, get your arrangements and get everything done. Write Rita right now. Rita at JimmyChurchRadio.com. I've got your phone number and everything in front of me. So write her now, and uh, we'll have your passes waiting for you at the front door. 
Uh, you're going to do all the workshops. You're going to have. Uh, you're going to be fed, um, and it's going to wow. be good. All right. Top of the line. Gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And don't forget, wait. it's at the Crown Plaza, so you got to get your rooms Crown and get Plaza. everything get everything arranged. And we'll see you on Friday. I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> we'll see you. Can't wait to meet you guys. Thank you, Cindy. Good night. Good night. Have a great one. You too. Bye. That's what I'm talking about right there. Cindy coming out from North Carolina. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. You're live right now. Three, two, one. Last crack at it. Oh, I hate to do this. Bam. I hate to do that. All right. Three, two, three, eight, two, five, five, zero, four, five. Cindy's coming out from North Carolina. She's got herself a pair of, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to give her gold, a pair of gold passes. And there you go. Done. And that is cool, man. Okay, let's go back to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Oh, my goodness, I'm live. Yes, you are. Hello, Faders. Hello. Uh, I'm Justin from Buffalo. Hey, Justin. How are you, man? Dude, the head looks pretty sweet. Don't be Uh, nervous, Justin. Just calm down. Take a deep breath. A little liquid persuasion. All right, so basically, um, I just, I have a memory of entering my body as a child. Um, it's short, simple, sweet. Uh, basically, black void, viewing the bedroom from up top, not the house, just the room, and falling into a crib, getting up. I'm aware, I'm awake. Hello, climb out go into the kitchen, my mom comes out, asks me what I'm doing, and I'm talking to her, speaking English, and, uh, you know, whatever, we're we're going back and forth. Next thing I know, uh, I see the phone, and I go to pick it up, and I'm like, what is this? She's telling me what it is, you know, and I'm going to use it. And I'm like, what's our number? She tells me our number. I try to dial it. And I'm like, what? what's this noise? And she's like, you can't call us silly. <laughs> so um, that's my first memory. Very short, very sweet. That's all. Wow. That's nuts. And uh, the thing that really messes me up, Jimmy, uh, it's really kind of tough to say, but I didn't really realize what I went through until I got into my early 20s and took a some would call a heroic dose of LSD and had the same exact experience. Oh, the same exact okay. experience. My bedroom, of the bedroom I had in my 20s, I went up and out, just did whatever, into another, I, that's a whole other story in itself. Right. But I remember the same exact descent into a room in a void, no house around it, just the room. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, Crazy. No, it's not crazy. It's not crazy at all, man. And I'm glad that you had that experience. And and just to remember it and and then to have it uh, come back to you and to actually do it again, um, I, I find it extraordinary. And I'm really I, glad that you shared it with us. It's, it's just so strange to me. Like, after correlating the whole story with my mother... I was already two years old at the point. And, and so this is the thing as an adult and you look back, what, what does that experience tell you? If, if you know what I mean, does it just let you know that there is something else out there that we just completely don't understand. And when you hear other people talk about it, you go, you know, I know they're not nuts because this happened to me. Is that what it's like as an adult? You took the words right out of my mouth, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, it, I have to thank you for sharing that with us. That is, I I, I, it, I don't want to be cavalier, is, but dude, that is so cool. I, I, I As a kid, just uh, everything about this being here, it just confused me. I saw an El Camino. I'm like, Mom, what is that? Is that a car truck? And she's telling me, you know, what it is. And I'm, 
it's a car truck, you know. <laughs> things just didn't make sense to me in this world. That it was weird. So just trying to figure out where I am, what I'm doing, and just all these years, I'm almost 35 years old, and I still feel like I'm kind of a child, you know. Like I get really giddy and excited about certain things, you know. Exactly, and and that's why you found this show, Justin, and never forget that. I'm so grateful for you, Rita, the crew, the Fader Knots. I'm just grateful that I have this outlet. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. I've been into all this stuff since about 2006 when I had that experience. Uh, it's, about 2005, 2006. Right. And, and, and isn't the Fader Knot family just the, the coolest thing ever? I love them. They, they welcomed me with open arms. It was great. I feel so great. I, I haven't felt so much love from total strangers in a long time. Well, and, and soon uh, you're going to be able to come out and hang out with us one day. I really hope so. We're already, I'm, my family's talking about moving southwest anyway, so I'm like closer to the bunker, you know? <laughs> well, it, you no, know, and, and we really have... Excited. And we have so many conferences that we do all year long, and and there'll be a chance. And when you come out and you hang oh. out with thirty, forty, fifty fader knots all at the same time, and you're and you're just going to be like, oh, it's good, you know. You, you, you just wait, Justin. Thank you, Jimmy, so much. Let's and, get to some other calls. I really appreciate you taking mine. Yeah, thank you so much, Justin. Be safe, and we'll see you on Friday night. You too. Safe travels, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, Justin. Bye. That was a great phone call. And uh, Justin came in strong, by the way. Came in strong. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a great phone call right there. That is a great phone call. Okay, I am going to uh, do a couple of things here. Let me do this. I'm going to put a couple more calls on hold. If you are on hold, stay right there. You will be up next. And But I got to share this with you before I hit the break because this is one of the craziest things that I have ever reported on this show. And whether it's outlawed or not, okay, talking on the phone while driving is a bad thing right? Texting. We know that. That is a distraction while driving. But stuffing your face with food could also be illegal. At least that's what New Jersey's lawmakers are proposing right now with legislation to ban both eating and drinking while operating a motor vehicle. I'm not kidding. The fines could range from two to $400 for the first time munching while driving and if you're a repeat offender expect those fines to rise upwards to 600 to 800 dollars or even lose your license and maybe even altogether but if this bill passes and eating behind the wheel gets outlawed the drive-through think about that and all road trips could be ruined forever how is that even possible Every drive through every McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, in and out. What? In and out is going to have a walk through lane and you can only eat while walking. And wouldn't that be a distraction? What happens if you're eating a burger, you're eating your in and out double double, and you step off a curb, <laughs> right? <laughs> is that going to be illegal? I can't even believe this. One of the one things that we hold sacred in the United States of America is being able to slurp on a chocolate shake and eat a burger while driving. New Jersey, really? Unbelievable. This is Fade to Black taking your phone calls, trying to give away Fade to Black hat number one. This is Fader Night, 323-825-5045. If you're on hold, stay right there. Take a quick break, and uh, I'll pop a couple of more calls. So if you're on hold, just don't freak out. Okay, you'll be next. But then we're going to figure out who won this hat. All right? And I'm depending on Twitter to give me some advice. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. 
This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA, The Planet. I'll be right back. Listen to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-618-WAVE 888-618-WAVE or visit MyDryHome.com MyDryHome.com Ride the wave Wave Home Solutions For a healthy, comfortable home What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 stereo system is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boom boxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this, it's amazing. It's just 129 bucks and use the promo code JCRTWS and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple, just go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner, go back Lee Tepe. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRA Radio.com. This is KJCR at Jimmy Church Radio.com. All right, welcome back to Fade to Black, going old school on Fader Night. Back-to-back phone calls all night long. Tonight, I'm trying to give away Fade to Black hat number one. I've got it right here in the bunker. No joke. And I'm just letting you know, this was the first hat off the production line. Popped it on my head, took some pictures, and uh, brought it into the bunker tonight. I am giving away Fade to Black hat number one, and I will sign it for the lucky winner. All right, let's go to the phones. I know they're backed up. We have a time. We have. We could take a few more. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. You're Hi, live. Jimmy? Yes. Hi, it's Skater Lisa. Hey, Lise. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am. You know, I'm good. I want to know how you are. I'm. I'm doing great. Um, I have kind of a, a trippy story um, to share. I. Um, I'm dealing with, I have a melanoma at the moment, and I'm taking care of that. But I, the, I had one when I was 21 on my back and in my, one of my shoulder blades. And um, I had, there was nothing visible there. It didn't look like anything, you know, any problem. But um, I just recently confirmed this with my sister. And she said, I, I came to her one day, and I was upset to the point that I was crying. And I said there was something wrong on my back, and I needed to go see the doctor. And I managed to convince her to take me to a dermatologist, and they looked at it, and they ended up doing a biopsy and came back malignant. 
uh, malignant melanoma. And um, thankfully, the, it was early, and the doctor, you know, did an excision in the office and got it all. But um, yeah, it was just really strange that you know, I just something I don't need, I don't really have a, a totally remember what caused me to you know think that, but I remember being upset and I was convinced there was something wrong and I need to go see a doctor. And to this day, I don't know why. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, right now I, 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 you know, developed another one, but, um, I have some really good doctors and, um, everything's looking good right now. Wow. Wow. Okay. Don't freak out the fade or not. Just, you know, Uh (laughs) I mean, you're, you're freaking me out, but I just, you know, um, is I just want you to be okay. I, I, how's your health? Oh. Do you feel good? Oh yeah, yeah, I feel I feel great. Um, I, you know, th- I had a CAT scan and of my pelvis and torso, and that came out clear. And I'm getting an MRI on Tuesday, and nothing that'll be clear. And um, I think I'm gonna be fine. Oh man, is that why you're bailing out on Sacramento? Yes, I can't. I have some yeah, medical appointments I need to go to. Ah, uh, okay. So you get a pass card then. I'm going to give you a hall Thank pass. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give you a okay. hall pass, but you only get one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> are, are we clear on that? You're going to come hang out with us at the next one. Absolutely. Okay. All I right. Promise. I, I'm just so glad that you're okay, and uh, just let us know, you know, on Tuesday. Let us know. All right? Okay. I will, as soon as I can. Skater Lisa, the Ridge, the OG. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thanks. Lisa. Love you, Jimmy. Love you, Fader not. Love you right back, and you know that. Thank you, Lise. Good night. Lisa, uh, in case you don't know the story, um, and if you're just now, uh, you know, a new listener to the show, Lisa has been with us since, uh, I'm going to say going back to nearly episode one and she started messaging me, uh, very, very early on, uh, episode one, episode two, and, uh, she stayed in the background And she finally, you know, you know, came out to the to the front and and stuff. But we've hung out, uh, you know, uh, since then. But she is seriously when I say OG, there's a couple that have been with us since the the first show. And that's Arthur Portillo um, and and Skater Lisa. There's a few others out there. But the ones that have been here since the very, very beginning and have watched this show grow that's Skater Lisa and and Artie Portillo. And uh and there you go. All right. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Um, hi, Jimmy. Hi, who's this? This is Destiny from Tennessee. Hey, Destiny from Tennessee, how are you? I'm really doing good. I'm doing good. I'm blessed and for some reason or not I have butterflies in my stomach that I got through to you. Ah, but you I didn't d- think I was going to be able to. Yeah, the phones have been jammed, but that's, you know, there there you go. All right. So I Des- know. I, I know and you want I've been enjoying this show. It's a great show tonight. I've loved all your callers, and I'm so happy for the lady that, um, you know, had the cancer but doesn't anymore. That That's great. Yeah, uh, she's been with us from the beginning. And I got to tell you. One of the coolest people, uh, you know, we've ever met, and and but I got to tell you, man, her name is Skater Lisa, and she dresses Skater like Lisa. it. Yeah, she dresses like it. <laughs> so ah, cool. cool. All right, Destiny, really quick, uh, you're gonna make okay. a run at the hat. What have okay. you got for us? Hey, oh, well, I'll take the hat, a book, a t-shirt. It doesn't matter, but I do have a story, and it's it's really weird. It's almost too weird for me, and that's hard to do, you know, because I'm all the time around weirdness. But a couple of months ago, I turned my den into a little um, ladies' cave, and I put all my favorite things in there, my album and my stereo, and, you know, sitting there every day staring at Michael Jackson on the bad cover album. And it's just great. But anyway, one late one night, I was sitting there, and I had my laptop on the table, 
the dog was asleep. It, it was quiet. And I'm just watching something on uh, Netflix. And something just flew or was tossed over my shoulder in front of my feet. And I'm looking around. There's nothing moving. The dog's done sleep. So I bend over to pick it up. And you know those little, like, the action figures? Well, my son had those and loved them. And this was like the little assault rifle that goes with it. Just a tiny little thing. And I just, I don't know what that was. I have a theory like um, parallel universe or I don't know, Jimmy, what what else could it have been? I have no idea, and that's very interesting. What what do you yeah. think? What do you think? I think because I still had the nest, uh, empty nest syndrome, even though my children have been gone almost 10 years. Um, it's just been here lately really bothering me a lot. Like, I've had to overcome the phobia of, like, going into their bedrooms but this summer, I finally made myself do that. And the room where I made um, my little lady's cave is um, a room where we were a lot as a family watching Disney movies or playing games or, you know. And it was hard for me to move back in there. Uh, but anyway, I don't... I, I used to have dreams all the time that they were little again plan and it just seems so real so it's like and I gave the, the gun I told my son the story and he was skeptical about it but he could not deny that yes that was his toy and it came out of nowhere wow how old is the house the house is about 35 years old okay. there was only one other family that lived here when we bought it right and I know they had a little boy but we lost touch with them. Right, right. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, that's uh, that's a great experience. I mean, I don't, I don't know how it, to it explain was. it. I don't know how to explain it. But um, I, I can't either. But I do think it's cool that it happened. I know it was very like I like I said I had weird things happen to me, but this was like the weirdest. <laughs> it, it, it was so. I'm glad to have had it though, but. You know, I think about it, but not as much as I used to. And I'm, by that, I mean by trying to figure it out. I'm just going to accept it for like a nice little fun experience and to talk to my son about it and bring back good memories. Right. It's all good. Right. It's hey, all good. Hey, Destiny, thank you for the phone call. And uh, You're welcome, Jimmy. Just shoot, read an email, and we'll uh, get something in the mail to you. Thank you so much. You're in the running I'll for the I'll do that. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Quick. You're live. Hey, Jimmy. Yes. It's Fran. Hey, Fran. Hey, okay, you gotta turn I got me a great down. story for you. Yeah, but you got to turn me down in the background. I can't listen to I it. I just did. Okay, good, good. I just did. Okay, Fran, real quick, what have you got? Um, Back before I was born... My brother and my half-sister both had missing time experiences. Okay. Yeah, my sister, when she, my half-sister, when she was like three or four years old, a uh, year before I was born, she went missing out of her bed at nap time. And my mom went in, couldn't find her, searched the room, called the police, they came and searched the whole house, checked everything out, was looking for footprints outside of windows and the whole nine yards, and about an hour later, they found her underneath the bed. Interesting. Uh, yeah, they would have looked there to begin with. I mean, right. under the bed is like the first place you look. That's right. And she wasn't there. So they finally found her, and it was like an hour and a half or so later. And then my older brother, uh, 
I think my mom was pregnant with me at the time. He went missing, and this is all broad daylight. He went missing at two years old in a department store. Searched underneath all the racks of clothing. They shut down the store. This is like 1952. You know, they shut everything down and they searched. Cops were called. They came and searched. The Everybody was everywhere looking for them. And a guy from the fire department was out in the back alley of the store and heard this kid crying and looked up and he was up on top of a three-story building looking down, crying. Hmm. And they went up and rescued him. It Hmm. was like an hour and a half after the fact. Hmm. So there was missing time with both of them. And this was all before I was born. And when my mom told me about the story of her pregnancy with me, her doctors wouldn't even agree that she was pregnant. She was like, yeah, I am. No, you're not. Every test in the book for 1953, no, you're not pregnant. Yeah, I am. And finally, when I was born, they had told her two weeks before I was born, two months early, oh, yeah, you're pregnant. Did your mom have missing time? (laughs) I don't know. She would never go there with me. I tried. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, man, Mom, you would please tell me you had missing time there. Right. You would have won the hat. See, you would have closed me on the hat right there. If you, oh, uh, you were oh, so close. You were so Jimmy, close. Hey, friend. You're so mean to me. Uh, <laughs> friend, <laughs> you can have anything you want. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that that's pretty amazing. And and, yeah. and what about you? Did you ever have missing time? Um, I mean, did it run in the family is where I'm going. Um, I think so. It, it's not so much uh, missing time as just craziness ensued all through my whole life. <laughs> Blame it on Jerry Garcia. Thank you so much, oh, Fran. Don't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Fran. Hey, be safe. And, I, I, you know, we're going to miss you in Sacramento. But, uh, you know, we'll, I know I can't make it. I will I'm to- going to miss that we'll, one. We'll toast to you. You know that. You better. Okay, Fran. Hey, we'll we'll see you Friday night, though, on the show. Oh, most definitely. Thank you so much, Fran. You betcha. You got it. Love you. Love you back. Good night. See, I I love the fader knots. And that story that she just told me. um, Oh, okay, look. We've got to give away this hat. Now, um, I watched what everybody... Uh, was tweeting out. So let's let's do this right now. I want to know what uh, the Fader Knots think about the phone calls tonight. And everybody uh, earlier was saying it was a tie between, I, I think the general consensus was a tie between Justin and Mark Tarana. So I need, I need, I need help here because I'm kind of with you um, because all of the phone calls were great. I want to get back to the story uh, about my dentist. But let's review really quick. We have uh, Bev. Do I miss the old days without technology? Boogie with his call with Windows 7. That was an excellent phone call. Uh, Captain and the I-Beam and uh, the hieroglyphics. Of course, Mark Tarana with his church on the Friday the 13th and the cameraman. It was really good. That was a campfire story. KC with the Taj Mahal. Dino uh, with his walkie-talkies and the UFO uh, conversation. Kevin in Vancouver wanted to know about KIC, the planet. Uh, Bob had to bring up Gobekli Tepe. And uh, actually, the connection with the scorpion I thought was pretty good. But Bob was gambling on Gobekli Tepe, pulling him through. Ben Trout, uh, with his family story, uh, uh, with his mom in 1975 and his and his aunt that passed. Uh, Dan uh, walked into Quebec, walked into Turkey. 
<laughs> and said, go back to Tepe in a bar. Uh, Ty from Edmonton, the Black Knight satellite. Eric and his faded black license plate and Steve Jobs and Wozniak story. Uh, excellent, too, by the way. Cindy in North Carolina. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Justin, uh, left his body. There you go. That's, that's high up there. Uh, skater, Lisa skater will always uh, get something. So there you go. But skater, I'm so glad that, uh, you're okay. Destiny and the air rifle story and Fran and the missing time. Okay. So what's the consensus here? Uh, Rita just said she's lost her cell phone. That's what she just texted me. She's not doing so well right now. <laughs> uh, I vote for Mark. I like Bev's story. Okay. Uh, Fran, Fran, Mark, and Justin. Okay. I, I get that. That doesn't help me though. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, trying to get a consensus here wow huh okay i've got five minutes left and uh i've got les calling in of course he is the closer les what do you think where where should i lean here well and you can't you can't type you can't type and talk i'm not typing okay okay but i would think it's between mark fran and justin well i know that I know that, Les. <laughs> what does that do for me? Well, I can't choose. It has to be either you or Rita. I, I, I'm. I love all the fader knots, and and truthfully, I can't. Um, I, I love them all, and uh, it, it's when you know these people personally, it's it's really hard to choose, man. And I, I feel for you. Uh... Uh, if it were up to me, I'd give it to freaking Lisa, but it's not up to me. Oh man. Guess what? My, uh, Twitter just crashed right oh, now. No. My Twitter just crashed. Let's see if it restarts. See, okay. It did. We've got bloke from Bob. Okay. We've I got, got Ronald said, Bev. Brian um, says, Justin. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, let's see here. Do sky said, Justin. Uh, let's see. IDP says Tarana, Dino, Bob, and the license plate. Okay. He didn't even give Justin in the top five. IDP. Um, let's see here. Mark, yeah, he says I'm copping out. <laughs> yeah. Mark. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's exactly what that was. Um, okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go with, um, Twitter. I need Twitter to confirm my vibe. Exactly. And I got to say this. I think all the calls were great actually. Okay, they were all good. I'm I you know what? I'm going to go uh I'm going to go with Justin and and I'm going to tell you uh I'm going to tell you why I'm going with Justin. Good call. Uh, um I'm I'm going with Justin because it took a lot for him to call in as a first time caller as a new fade or not. And the story itself and the phone call itself was great. And all of the phone calls were great tonight. And that's hard competition to uh, come in and, and swing like that, like Justin did. So uh, Justin, you've earned the first fade to black hat. And that is it. So Justin, uh, write Rita right now, send us your address and we will, uh, Put this in the mail to you, and uh, I will get it autographed. Everybody else tonight that called in, okay? I'm going to go down the list. Everybody write Rita if we don't have your email. So that's Bev, Boogie, Captain, Mark, KC, Dino, Kevin, Bob, Ben, uh, Dan, Ty, Eric, Cindy, uh, Skater Lisa, Destiny, and Fran. Everybody write Rita. I need all of your addresses and and confirmation. I have everything here that I need to verify you are who you are. Right, Rita at JimmyChurchRadio.com. We've got a pile of autographed books here that I will be sending out to everybody. All right? Wow, what a night tonight. What a week. 
uh, that we've had here on the show. Taken it is not over. No, taken tomorrow night off, and then we'll be in Sacramento uh, Friday night. That's going to be really good. We're going to have uh, a really good time up there with everybody. We've got a few things planned for that show, too, as well. So who are you going to pull on the uh, the show live, Jimmy? Do you know yet? Uh, well, uh, you know, look, I mean, we've got uh, – uh, we've got Holly Cook's going to be there. I want to get her husband, Mark, on the show for sure. Oh, yeah. We've got Brad Olson coming into town. Of course, we've got Dolan um, and uh, Len Caston, who was just on with us. But I want to get Len in on, uh, you know, to speak briefly. We've got Ruben Uiarte uh, that is uh, up there. He's never been on Fade to Black. And I've always wanted him on the show. So we'll finally get Ruben on the show. Um, and so there you go. And there's going to be some fader knots too. I want to pull some people up out of the audience. We won't be taking phone calls uh, that night. So the phone calls will be uh, the live studio audience. So we're going to do that too as well. And there's always going to be, uh, I think, uh, Cindy from North Carolina, if she... Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure she's she just wrote me, by the way, she goes, <laughs> we're coming. I can't wait. So uh, we got to get <laughs> we got to get Cindy uh, on the air, too, as well. So there you go. And uh, we'll be up there all weekend. And then um, on Monday, uh, Damon T. Barry is going to be here. And I want everybody to go and check out Damon's YouTube channel and look at these films that he has produced because they are absolutely extraordinary. But it's his theories that he has put together that go back to the Anunnaki, uh, go back to Tepe, ancient Egypt, uh, ufology, and spirituality too as well that he has put together that are absolutely extraordinary. The production, uh, it's top notch, top notch. And I can't wait to uh, get him in here because his theories and the stuff that he has put together is uh, a little bit different and it's really well thought out. So Monday night is going to be a, an extraordinary show. And then uh, Tuesday, I'm holding off on this announcement because that's another big show. And then on Wednesday, Chris Medina and David Oman are going to be here. David Ooh, Oman has... That's going to be a good one. He's got the house that is next door to the Roman Polanski house where the uh, Sharon Tate murders happened. Oh, no way. Yeah, and uh, Chris Medina just went up there and did a reading. Um, something <laughs> that I would never, ever do. Chris, Chris said to us this week, he goes, hey, man, Jimmy, man, would you do it? And my answer... I can't say on the air, but let's just say it It rhymed with NFW. <laughs> I mean, there's just no way I would ever even think about or contemplate doing that because I've seen stuff over the years here in L.A. about that house and, and some of the action that has been going on there. And it's real. I mean, that, and I can't imagine one of the most horrific crimes in American history world, you know, took place next door. And I, man, I, I, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm There's some really freaky things going on with that house. And it's not only, you know, the murders that happen there, but it's also has to do with the geographical location. It has to do with the magnetics that go on there that, you know, there are certain people who can't even go in that house without wearing a space suit or it, it, it would destroy them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm fully with you on that. And I mean, why would you even buy the house? I, mean, I wouldn't really. So there you go. Hey, Les, man, great to hear your voice. Get us out of here. Yes, sir. Special thanks to all the first-time callers and fader knots who phoned home tonight. Fade to Black executive producer is Rita Kamurian. Special thanks to LJ3, that's me, Renee, Jonas, Mark. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Brother Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Viteau, and Mark D. Kovar. Fady by Dale. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA The Planet. And with that, till Friday, Jimmy and I are out of here. Thank you so much, Les. We'll see you Friday night, my brother. See you Friday. All right. Special thanks to John Rappaport, by the way, who couldn't uh, make it into the show tonight. But he will be back next Thursday. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2016 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. Don't forget, all of you winners tonight, email Rita. We'll see everybody Friday night from Sacramento. 
and the Awareness Life Expo. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Everybody be safe. Go Beckley Tepe.